just to be clear, guys, let me, uh, I'm going to shut off the hand raising uh, because we're not going to have anybody up or even going to be really engaging with the chat very much, answering questions or anything until uh, we're done with the lecture part of the discussion. As I said, we'll be playing clips from uh, the previous room that they did and we'll be engaging with them as well as presenting our uh, evidence uh, from the text of Imam Bukhari and others that uh, commented on his works, even amongst the uh, Mutikalimun, the Ash'ari and uh, Maturidi scholars, and uh, taking a look at some of what they had to say, commenting on the works of Bukhari. So we will be presenting our own evidence uh, and our own texts that we felt uh, were neglected from the other side. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason they didn't bring up uh, some very important texts um, uh, from the works of Imam Bukhari and others who commented on his works. So that's the main thing we'll be doing here today. Okay. All right, should we start in Salah? Yeah, 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 we can start. Inshallah. And guys, uh, share the room. A lot of people, probably not as many people are going to come because we had to delay it several times. But uh, for anybody that you know that was looking forward to seeing the room, uh, feel free to share it with them now because we're going to start uh, the room now. Yeah, by the way, I'll, do, I'll send you that in a second, but you can start when you're ready. All right, no problem. Um, okay, so um, I'm, I wasn't listening, like, from the very start, so I'm not sure. Do you give, like, an overview of what we're doing and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, no, I just explained what the room is a response to and what we're going to be doing in the room and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we got through as as many points as possible, inshallah. There's, um, there's a lot to say in the aqidah of uh, Imam Bukhari. Um, and uh, of course, there was a lot to say in the last room about uh, Al Tabari, um, uh, but I think there's maybe a bit more to say uh, when it comes to uh, Al Bukhari. Um, so, we're going to look at some of the writings of Imam Bukhari, um, mainly Khalq Afal uh, Ibad, uh, but also uh, possibly if we have the time, some of uh, what he has uh, in his Sahih. And uh, as Jake said, we're going to try to demonstrate, just as uh, per the Tawari room, that his views are in line with the Salafi Aqidah as opposed to uh, Shari Aqidah. So, um, all right. So let, let me start here, right? So, so just as a brief intro, I mean, um, uh, first of all, let's like just. I'll pray that this is beneficial, inshallah. Like, uh, I, I, I generally, I was, I was, I was kind of thinking about this back and forth, and uh, I was thinking that a lot of people can benefit from it because um, uh, um, a, a lot of times that these kinds of discussions, when they do take place, it's nothing more than an ego battle. So, but I hope what we're doing here, inshallah, is for the sake of Allah and for the sake of like you know gaining knowledge and uh, understanding more about the Creator and His revelation, inshallah. I mean, I mean, Allah guide us all. Uh, to the truth. Um, so, uh, Imam Bukhari's book, Khalq Afal Al-Ibad, literally translated, the creation of the actions of slaves or servants, or of creation, uh, focuses on basically three very broad points, right? The first one is that the Quran is the word of God and that it is not created. The second one is that uh, Whatever relates to the actions of creation, such as our own utterances of the Quran, uh, um, that is created. And the third point uh, is basically a refutation of the Qadariya, who say that the actions of uh, creation are not created. All right. So, first point is that the Quran of the word is the word of God; it's not created. The second one is that. The actions of creation, such as our utterances of the Quran, is created. And the third is a refutation of the Qadriya, who say that the actions of um, the creation or the actions of um, um, uh, um, created beings are 
not created. Now, of course, there are other issues, such as Ru'ya of Allah and his ulu, and uh, these are discussed all over the book. But, I mean, as we're going to see, uh, many of these points are going to, uh, like most of the time, be related to the three broad points we've just mentioned. So, um, in however long we have, uh, I want to touch on a few points. Right? So, the first one is the uncreatedness of the Qur'an. Um the second one, and I think the second one is probably the most important one, which is the agent, action, object distinction for al-Bukhari. And uh, we're going to you know, get into what that actually means in a bit. Uh, and um, the third one is the transcendence slash aboveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we have time, the speech as described by Imam Bukhari. Uh, in the Right. So, um, so Bismillah. So the uncreatedness of the Quran. Right. So uh, it starts with the Bab Dikra Ma Dakar Ahl Al Ilm Lil Muattila Al Ladina Yuriduna and Yubedilu Kalam Allah Azza wa Jal. So it's a chapter on what the people of knowledge mention about the Muattila or the deniers of Allah's attributes who want to alter the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. So um, it starts off with. Uh, narrations that attempt to demonstrate the position of the people of knowledge the position they take on those who say that the quran is created and their position is unequivocally uh, uh, um, you know clear that whoever sa says that the quran is created is a kafir right and uh, of course there's there's no real disagreement on um on a surface level understanding of that specific point right uh but let, let's focus on specific passages. Uh, Brother Harun, in uh, in their uh, room that they, they did on Al-Aqidah uh, al-Bukhari, mentioned a lot of passages where, uh, you know, it's just explicitly and straightforwardly mentioned that whoever says that the Qur'an is created is a kafir. And that is repeated time and time again uh, through uh, the, the um, this book, Khalq Afal al -Ibad. And uh, I, I want to get to the passages that really... Um, 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 highlight a more substantive, um, um, you know, uh, aspect of this ongoing debate. Right. So, um, uh, Sulaiman ibn Dawood al Hashimi uh, said, this some, of the, some, some of the references I'm just going to directly translate, some I'll read in Arabic, inshallah, just to save time. So, he says, Whoever says the Quran is created is a disbeliever, and if the Quran was created as they claim, then why was Pharaoh? more worthy of eter eternal torture in hellfire when he said, I am your highest Lord. In an verse 24, which is created. So that statement that he said, it, the, 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 the sentence uh, is obviously created, right? And so why is he more worthy of hellfire than one who says, indeed, I am Allah, there is no de deity except me, so worship me as per Taha verse 14, which is the Qur'an that they claim is created, right? So so that last part is this, this is my, my emphasis right there, right? So so um, why is he different than whatever um, or whoever uh, um, uttered those words or whoever those words were created in? Because those words were created in Fir'aun and the claim is that the Qur'an is created, so the words were created in some created being uh, and now why is Fir'aun more worthy of hellfire than um, whatever uh, this created being is uh, so um, the idea is you, you, you we need to just sort of like analyze what's being said here right um, What's the what's the culprit in the case of Pharaoh? Like what what led Pharaoh to hellfire? What made his word words worthy of hellfire? Right. So th th that's a question we could ask. Right. Were they the meanings of the words he uttered, or um, were they the uttered words themselves, or were they both? Right. Now, obviously, both. Right? That's, that's that's what that's what speech is. I mean, at least we're referring to what. Uh, um, the 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 setup understand by 
speaking and words and what's being mentioned here in this specific narration. Now, that's what qualifies those specific words to be the words of Pharaoh, right? Um, like, if I repeat those words right now, the words that Pharaoh uttered, then those words would still be his, not mine, right? Uh, and that's because the source of those words uh, um, is Pharaoh. He's the original speaker of the words, so that's why they're attributed to him. And he's the speaker because uh, he had a meaning within himself that the words co corresponded to. I mean, is that the reason? Or is he a speaker because he spoke the words? Now, f forget the, 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 the philosophical baggage that uh, you know is is uh, comes along with these discussions we're asking what the the, the salaf and you know the, the proficient arab at the time understands by the speech being pharaoh so obviously it's the speech and uh, uh, the meaning so uh, um, um, that's uh, sort of agreed upon right now the created being within whom the verse i am god was created right now why would this being be culpable in this specific situation why, why why is he responsible here um is it the fact that there's a kufri meaning within their nafs or the fact that they are the original speakers of those words right so again we don't need to get too philosophical we're just talking about the way the salaf would conceive of these things here clearly the speech of a speaker ought to be spoken by the speaker and not someone else right so um so the bin Dawud al-Hashimi here is basically just telling you that speech can only be attributed to the original source in which it subsists. And neither him nor anyone else, um, that we're going to come across here later in, in this discussion, uh, has this mysterious idea of a single non-differentiated meaning to which the speech refers <laughs> when, they, when they talk about speech, right? Uh, they s simply mean what any proficient Arab of their time would understand by the word speech. So it's something um, uh, uh, um, as you know, per the description I just gave, it's not something that they don't know the meaning of, right? So, 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 so <laughs> we can have that discussion about tafweed, right? But they know the meaning of speech, and it's not something that you could fit all that metaphysical baggage of uh, um, uh, the mutakallimin within. Now, um, this is this is very important. So, what 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 are we taking from this? We're taking from this that if there is, uh, if, if, if these verses of the Qur'an, if these words of the Qur'an were uttered by uh, none other than creation, like n there is no other uh, um, um, being who uttered these words apart from created beings. Basically, Allah did not utter these words. Then by this understanding that we're looking at here, you know, that we're talking about the source and the author of speech, uh, uh, as a basis of attribution, then that's what uh, is being described here as kufri, as that whatever is the source of this speech, which includes the words and the meanings and all of that, is uh, um, uh, going to be charged with kufr if they are the source of the speech. Now forget about whether it's created, the, see the fact that it's created, doesn't help here because it was created in the case of Fir'aun as well. So this is a really important point. And the, the only way to get out of this specific point or this understanding of what uh, of this specific narration is to uh, basically say that the Salaf had this same very mysterious understanding of speech that comes with all the metaphysical baggage that Kalam Nafsi comes with. So the Imam also relates from uh, uh, Abu Walid um, he said, I heard Yahya ibn Sa'id say, it was mentioned to him that some people say the Quran is created. So he said, how do you deal with, say he's Allah, qul Allahu ahad, right? How do you deal with, indeed, I'm, I'm Allah, there's no deity except me. And Afan said, whoever says, he, uh, uh, whoever says, qul Allahu ahad, is created, then he's a disbeliever. Now, again, why, why, why focus on these verses, right? Um, See, if the author of these words, and remember, the author, not the one who like somehow caused them to appear in something other than himself, right? So if the author of these words is created, then he's clearly a kafir, because he's just <laughs> saying that he's the creator, right? Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what they're saying. If you want me to read the, 
narration again. So he says, I heard Yahya bin Sayyid saying it was mentioned to him that some people say the Quran is created. So he said, how do you deal with it? Say he's Allah the one. So now, how do you understand his words here when he says, if Qulhu Allahu Ahad is created, uh, uh, um, then whoever uttered that is a kafir, right? Uh, or how do you deal with these? Well, sorry, that was the previous narration. In this case, he specifies these verses, which which are directly attributed to Allah. Allah speaking about Himself, uh, uh, and he says uh, he raises the question of how you deal with it. Right now, the 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 that's going to go back to the question of authorship. So, who's the original speaker? Now, uh, um, when you answer that question, uh, keep in mind. Uh, that we're talking about the aqidah of Imam Bukhari and the Salaf. So we're talking about their understanding of speech. They, uh, what they require clearly is the source of speech, right? Um, and the source of these uh, uttered words. Um, so, so if you say that these specific revealed verses were sp spoken only by created things, then that's the problem we just described. You try to make that work with the idea of this eternal single meaning that exists within the creator to which all of his created words refer. This is this mysterious uh, concept that even the mutakallimin themselves critiqued, right? Then you have a conception of speech that is just completely alien to what the Salaf are referring to here. I mean, that's just common sense. And even uh, many of the mutakallimin would agree with this. Like, um, uh, we can go into the Nusus about from the aim of the Mutakalimin talking about the Zawahir of the Nusus and what the Arabs understood from it and how it is opposed to the uh, um, uh, interpretations or the Tawilat of uh, the Mutakalimin. So, um, a third narration here is by uh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah Abu Ja'far al Baghdadi. So he said, I heard Abu Zakariya. Yahya ibn Yusuf as they say, we were with Abdullah ibn Idris when a man came to him and said, Well, oh, Muhammad, what do you say about people who said the Quran is created? And then it goes on until he says, These are not from the people of Tawheed. So he says, These are not from the people of Tawheed. These are heretics. Whoever claims that the Quran is created has claimed that Allah is created. Allah says, In the name of Allah. Now look at the reasoning he gives. So Allah says, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, right? So Allah cannot be created, and the most gracious cannot be created, and the most merciful cannot be created. This is the origin of heresy. Whoever says this, then upon them is the curse of Allah, and he goes on, right? Um... Now, this, this brings us to a very uh, serious issue, I think, which is uh, the, the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Uh, what this narration is basically saying is that the name Allah and the name the most gracious and the name the most merciful cannot be created, right? Uh, uh, because, you see, whoever is saying that the Quran is created, right? They, obviously, they don't intend, uh, they, they, they don't intend that uh, the Quran is, uh, um, or the word Allah in the Quran is identical to Allah, right? So uh, when he says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, right, and he says that if you say that the Quran is created, then that would lead to a, 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 a huge problem because Allah couldn't be created, ar-Rahman couldn't be created, and ar-Rahim couldn't be created. Uh, now. The issue of names with uh, our Ash'ari uh, brothers, right? Uh, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what, what, what do the Ash'aris uh, uh, say about the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Uh, you see, if, if just think of just the lazim of the Qawl. I mean, they say this actually explicitly. But just like, you know, just like we have, sometimes we have difficulty uh, um, understanding the explicit position uh, uh, that they have or that they hold to with regard to the kalam of Allah or the Quran and you have to kind of like dig uh, you know uh, for deeper layers uh, uh, most of the time the same uh, is the case over here so if, if you ask him if you ask uh, um, um, my brother is the name of Allah created right now clearly they want to say no they want to be in disagreement with the jahmi <laughs> who says that the names of Allah 
uh, who, who, who basically denies the names of Allah. Um, or the Mu'tazili that says that they are created, right? Uh, uh, but uh, is he really saying that they are uh, um, um, uncreated? That's the question, right? Now, what, what, what the reality of the case is that, okay, they say, yes, the, the, the names of Allah are not created. Similarly to how they say the kalam of Allah is not created. But then what are the names of Allah? Again, similarly to how the kalam of Allah is this mysterious notion of a single undifferentiated meaning to which all of Allah's words, even the ones that are mutually exclusive in terms of meaning, all of those refer to that same singular meaning. They also take a similar route in the case of the names and they say that, well, the name, a name, is identical to what is named. So when I say Allah, and I say Allah is not created, all that means is that He is not created. Because the name and the and what is being named, the referent, are identical. So therefore, when I say Allah, I'm referring to the essence of Allah Himself, right? Uh, uh, and uh, thus, you know, um, um, uh, the names are not created. Now, okay, let, let's okay, let's let's not uh, uh, dig deep into the philosophy here for a second and understand again what you think the salaf would mean by what a name is. So uh, clearly, I mean, uh, uh, linguistically, philosophically, from as many angles as you'd like, um, uh, at least when it comes to that context of of uh, the salaf speaking in the language that they know. A name is not identical to what is named. My name is Abdurrahman, and that name is not identical to what I am. There's the name, and then there is what is named. And there have been objections and problems raised with the Ashadis with regard to this specific issue because of the uh, singularity of the ref referent, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has one, and then the multiplicity of names to which they have to take different, you know, twists and turns as well. So, um, Essentially, similarly to how we want to say to them that, uh, you know, really what you're saying is that th the names are created. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, uh, similarly to how, to how we would like to say to them in the case of Kalam, uh, that uh, uh, really the, 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 the um, entailment of your position is that the speech of Allah is created, right? Now, we're not talking about the taqreer you do of your madhab. We're not talking about what you say or what you express. And it is... Um, obviously uh, uh, very praiseworthy of uh, um, the Ashara that they, as opposed to the Mu'tazila, uh, um, do, uh, um, um, you know, everything they can, or, you know, they at least put much more effort in uh, uh, sticking to the Nusus than the Mu'tazila would. But what we're talking about here is the Lazim of the Muqaf, so the, the entailment, right? Now, when you say that uh, uh, um, the Mu'tazila, so if the Mu'tazila say the names of Allah are created, I mean, what do they mean other than what you're saying, really? It's just the words are created. They agree, everybody agrees that the creator is not created. So, I mean, so why, why do you have a problem with what the Mu'tazili is saying? Similarly to how in the case of Kalam, when you say, oh, we don't say what the Mu'tazili say. We don't say the Quran is created. We say the Kalam is the Sifa of Allah. Uh, um, well, really, what the Mu'tazili is saying is that the words and the Al-Fad and the Nudum, these uh, uh, letters that are ordered and the words, they are created. And that's what we call Kalam. And uh, um, he disagrees with you on what you call Kalam Nafsi. Uh, but that's really probably more of a semantic difference because the Mu'tazili does not disagree that there Allah eternally knows the meaning or that there's this eternal meaning to which the word refers or Allah has, has knowledge of uh, you know the 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 um uh the created words or what they call created words right but he, he all he's telling you is that you see what you're describing as kalam nafsi that's not that's not kalam that's not the haqiqah of kalam right so so there's a there's a semantic difference there but if you put that semantic difference aside if you put the difference aside really but what you're affirming within Allah, they are affirming, they're just not calling it kalam. So it's just the mere expression. It's just the fact that they don't say that that which is within Allah is kalam uh, that you know makes a distinction between these two positions. 
Uh, and I'm not saying it's an insignificant position uh, uh, difference because, again, uh, sticking to the Nusus and what they say is it's important. But substantively, if you are going to look at the substance of both positions and their entailments, it's, there's really uh, um, not much different as, you know, is the case with what we just described with the names of Allah. So here, the, um, the narration is referring to uh, this specific, in response to this claim that the Quran is created, it says that would mean Allah couldn't be created, Ar Rahman couldn't be created, Ar Rahim couldn't be created, uh, and and uh, this is this is a very important thing uh, to notice and not just you know skip over. Many of these points uh, weren't mentioned. Uh, I don't think that's intentional, but but it's this is highly highly relevant. Um. So. Yeah, so now if we can move on to the second point, right? So this is this is what um, I would call, uh, or I think Jake would call as well, right? The, 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 well, the before we do that, before yeah. we do that, Abdu, I think we should probably play a section from them, uh, from their room and what they had to say about Kadam and uh, their understanding of what Imam Bukhari's uh, words were and what his text actually said, because what we see quite frequently and what I think we'll see in this recording is that the Ash'ari tends to assume, right, that people like Imam Bukhari had this idea of, you know, kalam nafsi versus kalam lavdi, and they just didn't express it that way, but that's what they really meant, and that's what they understood. and when they say that the Qur'an is Kalam Allah, what they mean is it's just a created speech that points to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eternal uh, sifa, which is, you know, subsist in his essence, right? They have all of this baggage that they're coming with. And you'll see when they read a text from someone like Imam Bukhari, they, they are assuming that all of this is built into his words and what he's saying. And it's just so obviously not the case, right? So give me one second here. I'm just going to play this clip. Uh, let me know if you can hear this, Abdu. Does not see himself. And that the name of Allah is created. Yep, yeah, it's audible. It's good? Okay. Because we're, we are responding to this room, and we want to show you, if you haven't heard the room, what actually they had to say. Imam al-Bukhari on page 66 he starts to make differentiation between our actions as creation and the sifa of Allah which is the sifa al-kalam okay he says on page 66 قال أبو عبد الله al-Bukhari said حركاتهم وأصواتهم واكتسابهم وكتابتهم مخلوقة he says the movements of the creation and their aswat their voices واكتسابهم and the اكتساب that Allah gives them the ability to, to do يعني, uh, good or bad وكتابتهم and their writing he says all of this is مخلوقة فأما القرآن المتلو المبين أسفد القرآن the clear Quran المثبت في المصاحب which is found in the مصاحب المصفور المكتوب which is written down uh, in the مصاحب المعافي القلوب which is found in the, the hearts of the believers فهو كلام الله then it is the كلام of Allah it is uncreated ليس ب, ليس بخلق it is, uh, it is not a creation so Imam Bukhari is saying that when it comes to your writing down, when it comes to your recitation, when it comes to your memorization, these are actions of yours. But what's it all going back to? It's all going back to the kalam of Allah, and the kalam of Allah is uncreated. Okay, so listen to what he said. I do not understand with all honesty how uh, Sheikh Harun can read this text from Imam Bukhari and think that it's somehow in support of the Ashari position. It is not at all, right? And he he properly, at least here, is making a distinction between the recitation, right, or the action of the individual, of the uh, human being, and that which is recited, or the act of writing and that which is written down. So Imam Bukhari is making a distinction between the actions 
of the human being, which the actions of the human being are created, versus what is being recited, which is kalam Allah and is not created, right? But what the Ash'aris many times do is they don't make that distinction, right? They say that the action of the human being is created, which we agree with, no problem. But they also say that which is recited is makhluk. That which is create that's what is recited is created. Why? Because they say that that which is recited is in Arabic and it's limited and yada yada yada, all of these things that they mention about uh, the Quran, the Arabic Quran, they say it is created. Whereas Imam Bukhari in this text is clearly saying the actions of the human being are created, but what is written down in the Mus'haf and that which is memorized in the hearts and that which is recited by the, by the people, all of that, that which is recited, that which is written down in the Mus'haf, that is not created. Well, what is written down? What is written down are the Arabic words, which he calls kalam Allah, and it's not created. He's not speaking about kalam nafsi. He's not, because kalam nafsi is not written down, right? It's not the e eternal sifa, which uh, subsists in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, which Imam Bukhari is saying is not created. No, he's saying what is not created is that which is written down in the Mus'haf. You see the difference? And I don't understand how uh, Harun or any Ash'ari listening to this can think that that is in line with their position. Because they say what is written down, what is recited, what is memorized is all created. And we will see in, in uh, I'm going to play another clip from Sheikh Harun where he contradicts himself. He blatantly contradicts himself uh, based on what he just said now. I want to play this clip one more time because I feel it's uh, very important. One second. Then Imam, Imam Bukhari on page 66 is supposed to make differentiation between our actions as creation and the sifa of Allah, which is the sifa al-kalam. Okay? Is that See, he says he starts to make a distinction between our uh, actions, which are created, and uh, the sifa of kalam. On page 66, قال أبو عبد الله من بخاري said, حركاتهم وأصواتهم واكتسابهم وكتابتهم مخلوقة. He says, the movements of the creation and their aswat, their voices, واكتسابهم, and the اكتساب that Allah gives them, the ability to, to do يعني, uh, good or bad, وكتابتهم, and their writing, he says, all of this is makhluqa. Yeah, no problem. The act of them writing down, their act of recitation, blah di blah, blah He's talking about the actions of the human being are created. So now he's going to make a distinction between the actions of the human being, which are created. But as for the Quran, that which is not created, which he's going to tell you, he's going to tell you what that is. Quran. It's that which is found in the Mus'haf, that which is written down, not the act of writing, but that which is written down, meaning the words, the Arabic words themselves. Which is written down uh, in the Mus'haf, which is found in the, the hearts of the believers. That which is found in the hearts of the believers, so that which is written down, that which is found in the hearts of the believers? Then it is the kalam of Allah, it is uncreated. It is not a creation. Okay, so very clearly, Imam Bukhari, there's no ambiguity here about what he's saying is kalam Allah and it's not created. It is that which is written down in the Mus'haf. It is that which is memorized in the hearts of the believers. Now, do the Ash'aris believe that? Do they believe that what is written down in the Mus'haf is Kalam Allah, Ghair Makhluk? No, they don't believe that. They don't believe that. They believe that what is written down and what is memorized is created, is Makhluk, okay? 
So it, it's very clear. And we, as, we'll, as we'll see in just a second, um, uh, this is the very debate here. This is the debate between the Ethides or Salafis on the one hand and the Muti Kalimun, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis on the other hand, is whether or not, there's not a debate about, oh, is, are my actions created? Yes, the actions of the human being are created. My act of writing uh, what is in the Mus'haf down is created. That action is created. But what is written down, is that created or not? That is the fundamental debate between us. The, the Ethides and the Salafis say, no, that which is written down in agreement with what Imam Bukhari says is not created. The Ash'aris and the Maturidis say, yes, that which is written down and that which is recited and that which is in the heart of the believers, they say is makhluk, is created. That is the very debate. But as we'll see, I'm going to play a clip here, another clip from uh, Harun Khan, which is in the same, it is in the same lecture about an hour or so later, where he explicitly says, the issue is not whether or not what we recite is created. He says, everybody believes that what we recite is created. When Imam Bukhari, he just quoted earlier saying the exact opposite, that that which what we recite and that which is written down and is in the heart of the believers is not created. You see? So let me just uh, skip forward here and play from this section. Okay, because it, I don't know how to interpret it any, any other than this is a direct uh, contradiction here. Okay, 205. But once they were first into it, then the Hanabila, uh, the Hanabila pointed out where the Matazila, everything. But, um, like, I don't know, like we just read through tens and tens of quotes of Imam Bukhari. Like I said, these... Yeah, he just read from tens and tens of quotes from Imam Bukhari. So remember that quote that he just read. Now compare it to what he says now. Quotes that I mentioned of Imam Bukhari, are they closer? Are they in line closer to what the Aisha had mentioned or the modern day Salafis? Imam Bukhari here, he's refuting the Mu'tazila on what point? He made it very clear. I don't know. Some of these brothers were not listening to all of the statements I was mentioning. He made it very clear. He said the difference between us. It's like we weren't listening to what he said. I don't think he even was listening to what he said, with all due respect. Now he tells you what the real difference is between, uh, one second here. Both true, what the Aisha had mentioned, or the modern day Salafis. Imam Bukhari here, he's refuting the Mu'tazila on what point? He made okay, so he says Imam Bukhari is refuting the Mu'tazila on what point? What point is he refuting them on? Very clear. I don't know. Friday's brothers were not listening to all of the statements I was mentioning. He made it very clear. He said the difference between us and al -Alim, and the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and the Mu'attila is in that they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifa of speech. That's where the Khilaf is. They negated the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether. And they said when Allah speaks, it's, uh, it's Allah creating speech in his creation. So that's where the difference is, yani. Not in that, wallah, what I'm reciting is a creator. Dua. That's masala, yani, mujma alayha. We can all agree to that. That what we are reciting is a creation. What we are writing is a creation. What we are memorizing is a creation. What we, all of these things are limited. So the speech that we are reciting is limited. Did you hear that? He said, the issue and what Imam Bukhari was refuting was he was refuting the Mu'tazila on the issue of the Sifa of Kalam, that the Mu'tazila rejected it and obviously Imam Bukhari was affirming it. And then he goes on to say, let me play it again. The issue according to Harun Kanj for Imam Bukhari was not over whether that which is recited is created or not. Um, sorry, these brothers were not listening to all of the statements I was mentioning. He made it very clear, he said the difference between us and al -Alim, and the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya and the Mu'attila is in that they negate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifa of speech. That's where the khilaf is. They negated the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala altogether. And they said when Allah speaks, it's, uh, it's Allah creating speech in his creation. So that's where the difference is, yani. Not in that, wallah, what I'm reciting is a creator or not. That's, that's... It's not in whether what I'm reciting, whether what I'm reciting is created or not. We can all agree to that. He says, we all agree to it. No, we don't. And neither does Imam Bukhari, which you just read from. What we are reciting is a creation. What we are writing is a creation. What we are what we are reciting is a creation. What what we are writing is a creation. 
memorizing is a creation. What we are memorizing is a creation. When the very quote that I just played from him was the exact opposite. Imam Bukhari said, the act of writing, the act of reciting, the act of um, uh, writing, which I already mentioned. All of those actions of the human being are created. But he says, that which is written down is not created. That which is recited, that which is in the hearts of the believers, that which is memorized, that is not created. And he is saying that we can all agree that that is created. So he's directly contradicting what Imam Bukhari said. And then he's accusing people of not paying attention to his lecture and not listening to what he said. It's just unbelievable. I, I'm just f sort of flabbergasted how this went right over his head. Anyway, so I don't know, um, Abdu, if you have any comments on that. Um, that's that's. So I wanted to play what they had to say about Kalam Allah before we moved on to the second section and compare it with what we had to say. Uh, that's perfect, because I, I, I think... Uh, it just perfectly links up to um, what we're moving on to, specifically the passage that I'm going to read from um, Imam Bukhari's Khalq of Al Al Ibad. So, um, so it's 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 just going to be um, directly related to what you were saying. So, so the second point, remember, what we're going to talk about is what we said is the agent, action, object distinction for Al Bukhari, right? And uh, this is a very very important point. I think worthy of calling, uh, uh, you know, a backbreaker or qasim uh, al because uh, um, for uh, Ash'aris, uh, as many of you uh, would know, um, the act of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is identical to its effect. So basically Allah's act of creating me is the event of me coming into being, is the effect, is the created effect. So acts, are created. Allah's acts, subhanahu wa ta'ala, are created. Now, uh, uh, and of course, when we're discussing what the aqidah of Imam al-Bukhari is, um, this needs to come up because it's one of the most central points of like uh, Ash'ari aqidah altogether, I think, because it directly relates to the idea of the uh, uh, um, uh, attributing volitional attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and qiyam al afal al the volitional attributes, uh, 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 the question of whether or not they subsist in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the huge, that's that's the major point that uh, uh, normally comes up in these discussions between uh, um, uh, Taimis and uh, uh, Ash'aris or Salafis and Ash'aris, at least the ones who, who, who know what they're talking about. So let's look at this passage from Imam Bukhari. So, um, I'm going to read this part in Arabic and I'm going to translate inshallah. Start reading in the middle there, sorry. Right? Okay, so here he's talking about the agent, the person who's acting. والفعل, the action itself والمفعول, the result or effect of the action now see that alone just that that statement alone is 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 a huge problem uh, for uh, the the, the ashari view on this specific point and ashari in general فالفعل, فالفعل صفة, والمفعول, غيره, right the fi'l the act is an attribute the act is an attribute والمفعول غيره and the effect of the act is distinct from the action so you've got an action and then you've got an effect that's distinct from it this is already in direct contradiction to the idea that Allah's act of creation is identical to its effect which is a very important point we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, um, um, uh, go into a bit of uh, detail on that Sorry, وَيَبَانْ ذَلِكَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى uh, وَبَيَانْ ذَلِكَ فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى مَا أَشْهَدْتُهُمْ خَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا خَلْقَ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَمْ يَرِدْ, uh, ولم يرد بِخَلْقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ نَفْسَهَا وَقَدْ مَيَّزَ فِعْلُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ مِنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ 
so here he's saying that Allah says that he did not give us witness to the creation of the heavens and earth. And what uh, um, the Imam is saying is that he made a, dis a, a distinction and he differentiated between the act of creating the heavens and the earth and the heavens and the earth themselves. Right. So he, he's whether you agree or not here, he's arguing for this case that the act is not identical to the effect. They are distinct and that the act is an attribute of the agent who is acting. وكذلك فعل جملة الخلق وقوله ولا خلق أنفس ولا خلق أنفسهم وقد ميز الفعل والنفس ولم يصرف فعله خلقا وأما الوصف من الصفة فالوصف إنما هو قول القائل حيث يقول هذا رجل طويل. Okay, now here he uh, mentions an important distinction distinction between our descriptions of things. And the attribute itself that our description refers to, right? So when you say هذا رجل طويل is a tall man, وثقيل وجميل وحديد فالطول والجمال والحدة all these attributes إنما هو صفة الرجل وقول القائل so the 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 um uh, them being tall, heavy, beautiful, all these attributes are uh, um. Uh, uh, attributes of the subject you're talking about and the statement uh, that you're making is a description of the subject uh, so when you say when you're describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your statement the speech is obviously a description of Allah and the attributes themselves that you're referring to, they subsist in Allah. So that's that's an important distinction, and it's going to be clear why in a second. Uh, yes, forward here. Hold on. Okay. واختلف الناس في الفعل والمفعول في الفاعل والمفعول والفعل. Now he's going to say and explicitly what the uh, um, you know the verdict is on this whole act. Uh, uh, versus object distinction that we're talking about. He's saying that there's a dispute, there, there is a difference of opinion between people, between different sects on the uh, um, this issue of agent, action, and object. What they said is that all actions are from creation. From, from, from humans, basically. ليست من الله. They're not from Allah. Basically, all act, acts are created. Uh, um, sorry, not created. Not free, not created. So that, that's an important point. They're all from creation. They all are sourced in creation. وقالت الجبرية, as for the Jabriya, what they say is الأفاعيل كلها من الله that all actions are from Allah alone. وقالت الجهمية, now this is a very important point. In the context of the Ash'ari Salafi uh, dialogue, وقالت الجهمية الفعل والمفعول واحد. And the Jahmiya said, the act and the effect are identical. They are one. The act and the object are identical. لذلك قال المخلوق وقال وقال أهل العلم. Then he mentions what the position of the people of knowledge is. التخليق فعل الله. The تخليق, act of creating or creation, is an act of Allah. Is the act of Allah. وأفاعيلنا مخلوقة. And our acts, our actions, are created. We agree on that point. Uh, uh, in opposition to the Mu'tazila. لقوله تعالى وَأَسِرُّوا قَوْلَكُمْ أَوْ يَجَهَرُوا بِهِ إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقُ So he mentions the verse that whether you... Um, uh, um, uh, keep your speech to yourself or you say it uh, out loud he knows uh, you know uh, what is within because he is the creator he is the creator of your actions uh, so now here this is a very important sentence right here the action of Allah or the act of Allah is an attribute of Allah. This is the most, probably the most foundational difference between 
you know, the two groups. And Imam al-Bukhari is explicitly saying it here. This should be relayed in a discussion about the aqidah of Imam al-Bukhari. <laughs> if you're trying to show that he's in line with your aqidah. Uh, you should bring this forward and try to explain it. So, al-fa'lullahi sifatun lillah. The action of Allah is, a, is an attribute of him. Wal-maf'ul ghayru. And the effect or the object of action is other than him. Again, repeating it very explicitly. Over and over again. Ghayruhu min al-khalq. It's distinct from him and it's part of creation. Wa yuqal liman za'ama anni la aqool al-Qur'an maktub fil mushaf. Now, here's the part that relates to what Jake was talking about. Now, now he's saying, we say to whoever claims, uh, here he's talking about uh, basically the lafdiya, or a, a, a form of the lafdiya, who uh, basically try to hold to the position that the Qur'an, it's not, it's not that the Qur'an is written in the mushaf, it's that the Qur'an itself, the Qur'an itself, is in the Mus'haf. What's he referring to when he says itself? The attribute. The attribute. I mean, because he, he was just talking about acts and how acts are uh, subsist in the agent and how the acts of Allah are uh, attributed to him. Uh, so what, you know, uh, follows from uh, uh, this position you hold to? أن تقول أن من ذكر الله في القرآن من الجن والإنس والملائكة والمزائن ومكة والمدينة وغيرها وَإِبْلِيسُ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَهَمَانُ وَجُنُودَهُمَا وَالْجَنَّةُ وَالنَّارُ عَايَنْتُهُمْ بِعَانِهِمْ فِي الْمُصْحَفِ I think it's عَايَنْتُهُمْ but there's a typo here but فِي الْمُصْحَفِ لَأَنَّ فِرْعَوْنُ مَكْتُوبْ فِي So you basically when you mention all these words you mention Allah you mention, you mention the uh, several cities and Iblis and Fir'aun and Haman and whatnot in the Qur'an it's as if you're saying that they themselves are in the Qur'an when you say that the Qur'an itself is uh, uh, is in the Qur'an that we have within our hands, as in the Sifa, this is the lazim, this is what follows from your statement. And he's going to um, explain why. Just as, uh, because, because Fir'aun is written, just as the Qur'an is written. Fir'aun is written just as the Qur'an is written. And, you know, uh, 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 the entailments uh, uh, um, keep coming, and it's even worse. من أكثر من حين يقول في المصحف وهذا أمر بين لأنك تضع يدك على هذه الآية تراها بعينك الله لا إله إلا هو فشك عرض بأن الله هو المعبود وقوله الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم هو قرآن وكذلك جمع القرآن هو قوله والقول صفة القائل المصوف. Okay, so he's saying. Uh, so you put your hand on the Quran itself, on the verse Allahu la ilaha illa wal hayl qayyum. Clearly, that's not an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah no no nobody with you know the the the, the slightest uh, um, um, you know intelligence or sanity would say that uh, uh, um would would deny that Allah is the one who is worshipped. And uh, um, his قوله, as in his saying of Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum huwa Quran and is the Quran wa kathalika jami'u al Quran jami'u al Quran huwa qawli and also all of the Quran is his qawl is his speech is his speech wal qawl sifatu al qail wal qawl sifatu al qail and the speech or the utterance is an attribute of the speaker. Uh, uh, now, it doesn't get more explicit than this because what uh, uh, Imam Bukhari is saying here is that uh, um, the Quran is written in the Mus'haf and that it's not that it the Mus'haf is identical to the Qur'an, and that's what directly relates to what Jake is saying. Now, what could it mean for the Qur'an to be written in the Mus'haf? If you say the Qur'an, the Qur'an is written, written in the Mus'haf, what are you writing? Like, what, 
what uh, 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 does the Arab understand by that? The Arab understands by that that the word of the words of the speaker, the utterances of the speaker, are being written, not that some abstract meaning is in the Quran, regardless of the words. No, it's that the Quran, the words of the speaker, are in the Quran. So, for example, if somebody authors, if if Jake authors a, a, a poem of some sort you know hopefully he, he never does that but if he does right and then he uh, uh, um, i hear it from him and i write it in a book i write it in a booklet and then i have it with me the speech that subsists within jake and you know jake's authorship of that speech you know that makes it attributed to him that attribute that's not in the paper that i have it's, it's not there so Again, the fact that the paper is created and our utterances are created and whatnot, all of that is a given and it's not really relevant. The point is, what makes the speech that's within the, the booklet that I have, Jake's speech, what makes it attributed to him? It's that he is the source of the speech. He spoke it. It's not that there's some meaning in Jake and that, you know, I expressed it somehow and then these are his words. I mean, that's not what... Uh, um, they mean when they say that the Quran is in the uh, um, the 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 Mus'haf, especially when he explicitly says that Al Quran Qawlullah, it is Allah's utterance, it's Allah's saying. And just a few sentences ago, he told you that acts are distinct from their effects. So now this is an act, Allah speaking. What does Imam Bukhari mean by speaking? What does Imam Bukhari mean by an act of speaking? An eternal, undifferentiated, abstract meaning that subsists within the essence? Is anybody claiming that that's the meaning that Imam Bukhari intends when he says that the Qur'an is the qawl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I don't think anybody could say that. Now, so he says that the Qur'an is Allah's speech. Allah, Allah speaks it, qawl, there's the qawl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is in the context of him talking about acts and how the acts subsist in the agents that perform them. And he says that the Qur'an, that is the Qawl of Allah, is written in the Mus'haf. Which couldn't mean anything other than what I just explained with the poem that um, Jake wrote. So I, I hope that's clear. Jake, uh, is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. I just want to stress why this is um, so important because some people in the room may not understand the Ash'ari position. And even when I say it, you might not understand it because with all due respect, it is so bizarre. Okay, which is they say that the action of the agent is the same thing, is identical to the effect of the agent. So the act equals the effect. What we just heard from Imam Bukhari is no, that is not the case. You have the agent, which in this case is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, the being who performs the action. You have the act of that being, the act of that agent, right? Which in the case of uh, Kalam would be his act of speaking, okay? And you have the effect of that action, right? or the effect of that speaking. In the case of creating, you would have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, him performing an act to create something, and the effect of that action, which is then the creation itself. The Ash'aris do not believe in this threefold distinction. They say that the action of the agent, the act of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his act of creating, is the creation itself it's identical to the creation itself you don't have an action right which produces the creation you have the act and the creation being the same thing this is utterly nonsense it's you know it's really almost meaningless um and a lot of people in the room listening probably don't even know what is, is can't even understand what's being said what does it mean for the act to be the same thing as the effect Right, it, it, it's very difficult to understand that. But why did they take this position? Okay, and this was the position of the Mu'tazila as well, right? They and, and the uh, Jahmiya as well. These other groups. Why did they say 
that the act is the effect. Why? Because they want to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do different things at different times. He does not perform one action and then perform another action at a later time. So he did not uh, speak to Musa alayhi salam after not speaking to him before that. Why? Because as we discussed earlier and which we will focus on uh, going forward is because they think that this results in what's called hawadith fi dhatilah, which means there are these uh, new occurrences or new events, okay, that happen within the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he goes from speaking and saying one thing to saying something else, then that means that there's hawadith new events or occurrences within his essence and anything according to them which is the famous kalami principle that they use to try to prove that god exists is anything with hadith in it must be hadith itself right anything that has uh, new events within it or um yeah these these new occurrences within it it itself must be hadith and anything that's hadith is makhluk anything that is has a beginning in time is created and harun khan says this explicitly uh in in uh in a section that we're going to see so their whole motivation for denying and believing in a god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that actually speaks that actually spoke to musa alayhi salam is because they say if he did that then he went from uh saying one word to saying another word and that means he changed and anything that changes and is in time in itself must be created all of this other thing that they're bringing on these lawazan these entailments from the position which they think are problematic and therefore they have to reject all of that which gets you there which we're saying is what the revelation clearly actually states right imam bukhari on why this is such a backbreaker right for harun kanj and for the ashari's is because first of all they don't make a distinction between the act and the effect right imam bukhari is making a distinction between the act and the effect and we will see even in more clear evidence that not only does he make a distinction between the act and the effect he says the actions of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not created right which the ashari say no the actions of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created why because for them the actions of allah are the creation itself so they must be created imam bukhari says no the act and the effect meaning the act of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created and the effect of that action which is creation obviously is created right and this is the clearest difference and one of the biggest differences between the ethodes or salafis and the uh, Mutakalimun, the, the Ash'aris and the Maturidis. Why? Because it goes back to their first principle. They must prove that God exists. And the only way, or one of the only ways in which they think they can prove that God exists, conflicts with a notion of a God that acts in succession, that does different things at different times. Therefore, they have to reject that. And they have to make ta'wil. And they have to reinterpret uh, the, the clear statements in the Quran. And what what is this result in? This is not just merely about one sifa, for example, Yad Allah. This is the entire Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described as a God that does different things at different times. He said that he created jinn, what? Before he created mankind. Well, how does that make any sense? Did he actually create? Was it actually an action which he performed, which he created the jinn, and then after that he created mankind? Well, obviously, that's a straightforward reading of the text. And all throughout the Quran, he spoke to Musa alayhi salam. Prior to that, he didn't speak to him. And then he stopped speaking to him, right? All throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions are described as doing different things at different times. He is a God that acts in succession. So not only do you have to make ta'wil or do tafwid al-ma'na with uh, what the Ash'aris will say about these uh sifat khabariya the 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 attributes which are known through the text like yad allah right the hand of allah but they have to do that with all of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions in the quran right so this is why this is such a big discussion and we'll see 
that according to the Ash'aris, this is like one plus one equaling two. You can't say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't speak to Musa alayhi salam and then he spoke to him. They say it's as contradictory as believing that one plus one equals three. This is what they say. And then they go on to say that anyone who actually understands the lazim of this qawl, meaning the, the entailment of this speech, of somebody believing it, they say he has apostated from the religion. He's no longer Muslim. This is what you see that they will say. So the reason why we're going on and emphasizing this point is because it's one of the biggest differences between the Atharis on the one hand, right? And the Ash'aris on the other hand. They actually, some of them anyway, will make takfir over this issue, right? Well, Imam Bukhari himself is very clearly affirming there's a distinction between the act and the effect. The act is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created, and the uh, effect of that act is created, the creation itself. Okay? So I just wanted to reiterate it because it's such an important topic that we have to understand going forward, inshallah. Go ahead, Amda. Yeah, I just want to find somebody to manage the chat because there was a lot of like um, back and forth. I'll, I'll just that, shut that, it. I'll um, just shut it down. You know what? I'll just shut the chat. I down. mean, it's it's not completely useless. There's actually a couple of good questions, so I just prefer one of the brothers coming up. Afzal is here. Afzal, if you if you're available. Here, you know what, guys? I mean, we can listen. We can disagree on this. We can have very strong uh, positions on this, but you guys need to be mature in the chat on both sides. If you have a question or a comment and you want us to address it later on and drop it in the chat, fine. But there should not be this constant back and forth bickering between the Salafis on the one hand and the Ash'aris on the other hand. Because if you're doing that, that means you're not really paying attention to the lecture and what we're saying and what we're reading from Imam Bukhari. Do you actually want to understand better and learn something? Or do you want to just fight and, and message each other back and forth while we're speaking? Okay, you have to have your priorities in order. So please, guys, pay attention. Thank you. So, so Afzal is. Wait, let me yeah, I made him moderator. Yeah. Perfect. Because when we're speaking, guys, we're trying to focus and make sure that we're, you know, we sound somewhat sensible up here when we're speaking. We can't be multitasking. And while I'm speaking at the same time, I'm looking to see, you know, is, uh, whoever is in the chat, Muhammad, I'm just making up a name, you know, insulting this other person. We, we're we not able to do that. So please, let's be mature and respect the stage and actually listen to what's being said. Okay. Um, so, so more on a related point. So um, here... Imam Bukhari relates, he says, قَالَ بْنَ عَيْنَا قَدْ تَكَلَّمُوا فِي الْإِعْتِزَالِ وَالرَّفْضِ وَالْقَدَرِ وَأَمَرُوا بِاجْتِنَابِ الْقَوْمِ فَمَا نَعْرِفُ الْقُرْآنِ إِلَّا كَلَامَ اللَّهِ So here he's talking about, um, you know, uh, um, there has been talk about the uh, i'tizal and rafd as in the rawafid and al-qadr which is uh, the um, 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 destiny which is related to the uh, issue of i'tizal. Umiru uh, القوم, and they've been instructed to uh, um, not interact with certain people or not befriend certain people of innovation. فما نعرف القرآن إلا كلام الله. We have never known the Quran uh, as anything other than the kalam of Allah. ومن قال غير هذا فعليه لعنة الله. And whoever says other than this, then may the curse of Allah be upon him. Then he says, ما أشبه هذا القول بقول النصارى. He says, um, how similar is this position or is this statement with the position that the Christians take? Now, it's very important to understand why he's saying this. ولا تجالسوهم ولا تسمعوا كلامهم. Okay, wait, that might be okay. But before before we understand why he's saying that, let's just um, look at the next one. قال سفيان في تفسيره إن كل إن كل شيء مخلوق والقرآن ليس بمخلوق. Verily everything Sufyan said in his tafsir that verily everything is created and the Quran is not created. 
وكلامه كلامه أعظم مما يكون به that's uh, the, the print okay أعظم من خلقه so basically the meaning of what this statement is because I remember the meaning is that is basically talking about the greatness of Kalam in relation to his creation so his Kalam is not his creation his Kalam is greater than his creation so um, that, that's very important لأنه يقول للشيء كن فيكون because he says to a thing be and it is فلا يكو به الخلق والقرآن كلام الله so creation is only through the kalam of Allah and the Quran is kalam of Allah what he's saying here is that everything apart from Allah is created and the Quran is not apart from Allah it's not something separate from Allah it's just like all the other attributes it subsists within him it's not created and his and his speech is greater than his creation is greater than created beings because he says to whatever he wants to create be and it is so it's so his it's his speech that brings created beings into existence so it's greater than the created being now what's the speech that he refers to here what's the speech that sufyan refers to here it's kun it's the kun so he says first of all kun is a qawl it's allah saying something uh, and and the verse is it's quite explicit in that it is an a, 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 a volitional attribute because it's uh, linked to irada will right so kun is his qawl is his he he says kun and then the created uh, thing that allah wants to create comes into existence right now, is the kun that Sufyan is referring to here some uh, uh, um, internal, undifferentiated meaning, as we were saying earlier? Is it this uh, uh, single meaning that all of the words of Allah refer to equally? Is that what he means? Is that what Sufyan means? Is that what the Arabs of that time understood by qawl, understood by speech, that Allah says kun? Would he mean by that that he doesn't utter the words? There's no uh, letters involved. There's no word kun involved. There's just a meaning. Of course, he doesn't mean that. He means that Allah says the word kun, utters the word kun, and that's his fi'l. That's an act. And as we saw earlier, an act is distinct from its effect. And the acts of Allah subsist within him. So Allah says kun, this is an affirmation of the love, by the way. So it's it's an affirmation of a few things. The love of kun, unless you want to say that Sufyan here, means uh, kalam nafsi, right? It's an affirmation of the love. Allah says kun, fayakun. And it's an affirmation, an implicit affirmation, of the temporality of kun, because of the verse. إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ that if he wills for something to be, he says to it, be, then it is. And this goes back to the discussion about the uh, 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 whether uh, 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 an effect can uh, lag behind its cause, as in if, whether you can have an effect and then a temporal gap for no reason and then an effect, which is a different discussion entirely. However, the verse itself is very indicative of temporality. In fact, as per the uh, 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 what our Ashari brothers um, hold to uh, 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 on this issue of acts, uh, uh, that is the lazim for them anyway. We don't even need to convince them. Uh, if like if the discussion was with the Maturidi, it would be different because our Maturidi brothers they affirm eternal acts. The Ashaira would say would agree with uh, with us and with the Mu'tazila that. An eternal act doesn't, mean, doesn't even make sense. There's no such thing as an eternal act. An act, by its very own nation, na uh, nature, is temporal. In fact, words and utterances, letters, if you're going to speak, that is in its very nature temporal. So we don't even need to have. We, we don't even need to bring the entire context of the verse because the very nature of the word kun here 
as is affirmed by Sufyan, is temporal in nature for that shahira. That's not something we need to convince them with. They, 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 they already agree with that and they affirm that, which is part of the reason uh, uh, as to why they deny the, 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 the al-fadh or the words themselves are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're spoken by Allah. So um, uh, you've got here the affirmation of, of the love and you've got temporality, right? And then he explicitly says after it, well, Quran kalamullah, just to just, you know, just to make sure that there's no doubt here. And the Quran is kalamullah, that's what he's talking about, right? So the kun is kalamullah and the Quran is kalamullah. You could say what you want about the qidam of the Quran, but just like we saw with the tabari, uh, rahimahullah last week, uh, or was it two weeks ago? The uh, uh, and and what he said about uh, the verse of Kun, uh, um, we've got the exact same picture here. It's just I think it's a bit more explicit here. So you've got um, um, and then uh, we go to uh, Imam Ibn Mubarak, of course, the great uh, Imam Ibn Mubarak, on uh, Umar, on Qatada, uh, and then in reference to the verse, wa kalimatuhu alqaha ila Maryam. And Allah's word, his word, you know, he uh, uh, gave to Maryam or he uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, basically the meaning of the verse is that he created Isa through his word. That's what that's what we understand. Right. So Allah gave his word to Maryam. Right. Bless her with his word. Uh, uh, and listen very carefully to what. Uh, is going to be said here because this relates to the whole question of Ujma, right? Because we, uh, our brother Harun was saying that part of the reason why uh, um, Salafis, modern day Salafis, are, um, have these problems is because of Ujma fil Lisan. They have a problem with their profici proficiency in, in the Arabic language and their ability to understand it. So it's going to be related to this point. So so um, what Ibn Mubarak says is, huwa qawli, uh, kun. That what 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 is meant by kalimatuhu? What what is the kalima, the word of Allah here? Is Allah's qawl, Allah's speaking of kun, right? Fakan. So this is a very uh, important point. There's 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 a distinction between uh, uh, in the Arabic language. Sorry, I just got distracted for a second. Um, Okay, so uh, there's there's a distinction between when, when somebody says something, uh, 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 there's a distinction between the qa'il, the person who, who spoke the words, wal qawl, and what is spoken, wal maqul, and the effect of the act. Now, long story short here, what's happening is that the nasara, and also the reason in the previous uh, narration we looked at for uh, from, um, was it Ibn Ayna? The, uh, the reason he said that this view of the createdness of the Quran is similar to the Nasara is because of this. Now, what the Nasara did, uh, according to uh, these A'imma, is that they confused the Qawl with the Maqul. Remember, the Qawl is the actual content of the speech, the speech, the act of speaking, right? The Qawl, the act. And the Maqul is the effect of the act. So, for example, if I say, um, um, stand up. If I, if I tell Afzal, uh, stand up, right? Now, I am the speaker, Qail, and my utterance or my, my statement, stand up is the Qawl. And Afzal, standing up, if he listens to me, is the Maqul, it's the, the effect, right, of the Qawl. Now, what, what, the, what, what is being said here is that what the Nasara did is that they confused the Qawl for the Maqul. They said that Allah's, uh, uh, Isa is Allah's word, and Allah's word couldn't be created Therefore, Isa couldn't be created. So they, they, they affirm divinity on that basis, at least uh, some of them. I mean, Jake would know more about this, uh, at least, um, you know, uh, certain sects. But whether or not they're right about this is besides the point. We're talking about what um, these Ayyama believed. So um, uh, uh, on, on that basis here, what Ibn Mubarak is saying, uh, is saying that, no, the, the Qawl here, the Kalimatuhu is, is Kun and the maqul, the, the uh, maqul al qawl, which is the effect of, of, of the speech, is Isa. But obviously, you can refer to Isa as Kalimatullah. 
uh, because uh, um, of like other linguistic considerations that we don't want to like, branch off to. But then you, you could you could you could you could say that in words, but then uh, 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 really what the Nasara are doing is that they're confusing these two things. Now, um, why is this uh, uh, again relevant to what we're saying? Um, you see, for for um, for the Mu'tazila, what, what the Mu'tazila said is basically if you guys say that. Kun is Isa, right? And Isa is created. Then you've got to create a Quran. There you go, right? Uh, at least that was said by uh, um, um, uh, the Mu'tazila. Uh, and what we say is that Isa is the maqul of the qawl, and he's not the qawl itself. He, he's not. He's not Allah's attribute of speech. He's not Allah's act of speech. He is the eff effect of it, and that. Is is uh, is very obvious. That goes back to the discussion about uh, um, the alfav and the um, the act being identical to the cre to, to to the effect, and and uh, that very crucial point we discussed. Because you saying that uh, um, um, that Allah's uh, act is identical to effect to, to to the effect um, plays a huge role in in the the question of temporality, and also. When we say that Allah's act, when we say that Allah's act of speech, right? Well, of Allah's tanzil, for example, Allah says tanzilul kitab. Allah gives a command that the kitab is revealed to the angels. Uh, we we get a lot of um, uh, funny comments about you know that it uh, 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 the attribute couldn't uh, descend, the attribute couldn't be revealed. It could, you couldn't see the attribute in. The mushaf, or uh, you know, it's it's it couldn't be uh, within my voice of recitation and whatnot. Now, so so, but but that's not what we're saying. That's, that's not what we're saying. Clearly, we're saying there's the qawl of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the attribute that Imam al Bukhari here is saying, and he was repeating over and over, uh, an attribute that subsists in his essence. Um, Jake, I don't know if you want to say something about that. I just need to respond. Uh, to something real quick and i'll be back in like 30 seconds yeah no, no go ahead um <clears throat> one second here because there was something else i wanted to play just very quickly from what harun khan had to say because i thought it was interesting one second okay 126 Yani, uh, it's, it's eternal, like it's, yani, it has no beginning, no end. How is that possible? Yani? So the challenge was in something that they were able to, yani, uh, yani, uh, able to sort of, yani, if they wanted to, they, they if they wanted to, the the, the people the Mughal have got about one, two, three, all created. This is what Imam Bukhari is. The next the next question is from Sister Whatever. She says, if uh, if Allah's speech is not created according to the Ashris, what about Kalam and Lafzi? Do you believe it's created? This is what Imam Bukhari is speaking about. Kalam al lafzi is when you, you, you do talaffuz, when you utter the words of the Qur'an, your utterance, your writing down, your memorization, these are all things that are limited, yani, so they are all created. But what's it all going back to? It's going back to that which is uncreated, unlimited, which is the attribute of Allah, the attribute of speech. That's what the whole book is about, yani. Yeah, so he says this is what the whole book is about. The whole book right. about is exactly. about, supposedly, the Ash'ari distinction between Kalam nafsi and kalam lovedi, right? The love of the Quran is uh, created, right? And kalam nafsi is not created. And I'm just sitting there thinking, well, I don't know what book he was reading because to think that this entire book by Imam Bukhari is trying to, when he says it goes back to the Sifa, what he's saying is this eternal attribute of uh, kalam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, it all goes back to that. Right, and the whole book is about that. See how he glosses over the distinction between the actions of the human beings, which are created, fine, no problem, and then he skips over the wording part and just says, "Oh, but the actions are going back to, uh, to the sifa, which is this eternal uh, attribute, kalam uh, nafsi, which is not made up of letters and sounds." Right, <laughs> but he totally skips over the part about the words, the words of the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, 
are these created or not? Right? And as we heard him say before, according to him, there's no difference of opinion. They, of course they're created. But Imam Bukhari is saying exactly the opposite. So I just wanted to play that short, um, short clip while we were waiting uh, because, you know, it's just bizarre how he's interpreting Imam Bukhari. But then on the other hand, even further, he thinks that the entire book is about this idea, right, uh, of uh, kalam nafsi and kalam lovdi distinction, which it's just clearly not. But I don't know if you're back, Abdul. I am, but earlier I, I, I heard you mention something, or I heard Brother Harun saying something about regress. Was that the the specific clip about the regress, or, or or am I confusing with the other one? I didn't hear anything with regress. I'm not sure. What you okay, okay, never mind. No, 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 that's that's me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, so just to emphasize on the last point, right, and and the and the the, the whole ujma part about you know the act and the effect. Um, it's actually explicitly mentioned the whole Ujma thing within the book. I just uh, um, don't have the passage right here right now, but that 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 is a, a, a very uh, crucial point. So we can end with that on this point that Imam for Imam al Bukhari, uh, uh, one of the most crucial aspects of 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 this uh, you know um, Ashari uh, slash Salafi uh, dialogue is the idea of the act. And its relation to the effect, right? And Imam Bukhari clearly holds to the the, the a position that is in direct opposition to the uh, what our Salafi brothers hold to. And this is in one of the most crucial aspects of Al that relates to Qiyam al Fadl the the you know the uh, volitional attributes and whether or not they subsist in Allah and the question of temporality and succession in actions. Um, so, yeah, the next point, uh, we can very quickly, because uh, I'm not sure how we're doing on time, but so uh, when we talk about the aboveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ulu, transcendence, ulu. So you're moving on from the, the hawadid discussion, right? Um, it's kind of, it's kind of like, it's kind of still going to come up like it's still related but if there's something you want to specifically well, because i wanted to play i wanted to play the section that what i'm calling is the backbreaker because i didn't play that yet oh yeah yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah okay so so let me play this part and it's um it's about three minutes long this is very important uh and it refutes what they're saying on many levels okay where is this here 57 minute mark okay one second. Okay, here we go. And the Jahmiyyah on the opposite side. <clears throat> this time is on 126. 126. He says, فأخبر أن العمل من الحياة ثم بينا فلقه فقال وأسر قولكم أو جهر به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم وما خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير. He says, مع أن الجهمية والمعطلة إنما ينازعون أهل العلم على قول الله أن الله لا يتكلم وإن تكلم فكلامه خلق فقالوا إن القرآن المقروء بعلم الله مخلوق فلم يميزوا بين التلاوة بين تلاوة العبد وبين المقروء وقد رفع أبو بكر صوته بقوله Sorry, Jake, can you, can you just go back a little bit because I, I want to hear this part I missed a few yeah. seconds Yeah, he was and the point I want people to focus on is what he just read he read uh, from Imam Bukhari saying that the, the Mu'tazila say uh, that the uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't speak, right? He's not a God who actually speaks. And that if he does speak, he creates uh, he creates words in uh, in creation, and that's what, what you would call his speech. It's something that's creative. But anyway, yeah, I'll play it back. إنما من العمل من الحياة ثم بينا خلقه فقال وأسر قولكم أو جهر به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم وما خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير يسأل مع أن الجهمية والمعطلة إنما ينازعون أهل العلم على قول الله أن الله لا يتكلم وإن تكلم فكلامه خلق فقالوا إن القرآن المقروء بعلم الله مخلوق فلم يميز بين التلاوة بين تلاوة العبد وبين المقروء وقد رفع أبو بكر صوته بقوله أتقتلون رجلا في ذلك. Very important. He says the Jahmiyyah 
and the Mu'attila, they are at odds with Ahlul Ilm, yani the Sunnis, based on what exactly? Ala qawlillah anna Allah la yatakallam. They are at odds with, with the Sunnis in that they believe that Allah does not speak, Allah does not possess the attribute of speech. And if he does speak, kalamuhu khalqun. If Allah does speak, then the speech of Allah is a creation that he creates in his creation. So for example, they believe the Mu'attila and the Jahiyyah, that when Allah spoke to Musa, Allah created speech in the fire that Musa heard, but Allah does not possess a quality of speech. Again, yani, this is completely in line with what the Asha'i was saying regarding this Masala. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this is this is uh, um, this is. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, this one's uh, strange. Uh, the, I mean, uh, one question to ask is: so when when, uh, when he says that um, for them Allah cannot speak, uh, and then he says he doesn't possess the quality of speech. I mean, I think um, that is 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 um, sort of trying to 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 um, uh, just soften the language there. Uh, so that it's not explicitly in opposition to what he's saying. I'm not saying he's doing that liberally. But what I'm saying is that when he says that they say he cannot speak here, when you, when you say speak, do you think he's referring to an act of speech? Because when when they say that... Uh, we'll see he, very he, clearly that he is in just a second when I play the okay. next part. But yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, because that's really important. Because if he's saying that... He's he's basically uh, saying, yeah, we're in agreement with this criticism. We're against the Montezilla because for them, he can only speak if his speech is creation. Well, what do you disagree with them about here? When, in fact, for you, an act of speech, an act of speech, the act is created. So if you say that Allah uh, um, unveils his uh, speech to be heard or something, there's an act that is related to the creation or to the created being that Allah is communicating with, then that act, um, is it created? Um, it's, uh, so, okay, it, it's volitional, as in it's, it's related to the uh, irada. Um, okay, fine. But then is Allah actually performing an act of speech? No. Whatever, whatever is going to uh, uh, reach the uh, creation, at least in terms of the revelation that we receive, is itself created. That's Allah speaking. You call it speaking, but His speaking to us is in a created form. Now, of course, there's the question of Moses and and Allah speaking to him directly, and what really that adds up to and means for the Ashadis. Because I don't know if you're going to bring this up later, Jake, but then I think there's a part the where the next they part mentioned... that I play, the next part that I play, is when he quotes from Imam Bukhari and uh, he likens the Quran to Musa alayhi salam speaking, and you hear what he says. But yeah, so if that was just, did that you want to keep yeah. going? Yeah. yeah, let me just play it because now you'll see that what Imam Bukhari is speaking about is an act of speech, which is very important. He's not talking about an eternal sifa, which is kalam nafsi, which is not an act, which is not made up of letters and sounds. That's not what he's speaking about. It become very clear. On, the, uh, on page 128, he mentions the Mu'tazila. And the Mu'tazila are like an extension of the Jahmiyyah. So listen to him, the, the Mu'tazila or an extension of the Jahmiya. That's correct. Okay. They're not as extreme as the Jahmiya, but they're considered as a deviant sect. And the ulama differed whether they are out of the fold of Islam or not. We won't get into that masala. Anyways, he says on page 128, <laughs> says when you recite the Quran, what you're reciting is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so you listen to that. When you are reciting the Qur'an, what you are reciting is Kalam Allah. <laughs> to be very clear, because before he was emitting that, and then before he was saying, well, no, there's actually no difference of opinion. We're not arguing about whether or not what is recited is created. Of course, everybody believes that that which is recited is created. Of course, Imam Bukhari doesn't believe that. Like yeah, and just, just to be clear, Allah. clearly in this case, he doesn't mean because we're all in agreement that the recitation itself, which is like our utterances, are created. He yeah, should mean action, what, yeah. what we mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Which he's going to go on to tell you. He's going to go on to make this very explicit. This is what I call the backbreaker, folks. So if you, if if Esharis or 
anybody who listens to this has a bad back, be careful. Says when you recite the Quran, what you're reciting is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Allah said, Innani an Allah, indeed I am Allah, there is no deity but me, fa'abudini, so worship me. Illa al Mu'tazila. He says, except the Mu'tazila, they do not say this. They claim that the fa'al of Allah is created. That the actions oh, of, of, the, of, the, of the creation of Allah, they are uncreated. Meaning that the uh, the uh, the belief of the Mu'tazila is that the the person, the create, the uh, you as a slave of Allah, you create your own actions. Your actions are not, are not a creation of Allah. وَهَذَا خِلَافُ عِلْمِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He says this is in يعني, in opposition to the what the Muslims know to be true. Okay, so listen what he said. He said what the this is a quote from Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari says that what the Mu'tazila believe is that they say the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created, are makhluq, and that the actions of the human being are not created, right? Are not makhluq. And then he says, Imam Bukhari says, this is in opposition to what the Muslims believe. This is in opposition to what the Muslims believe. Now, what Harun Kanj does is, he focuses on the second part where the Mu'tazila say that the actions of the human being are not created. And he says, yeah, look, that's in agreement with what the Eshranis believe because we believe that the actions of the human being are created. Well, yeah, of course, we believe that the actions of the human being are created. So on that, no problem. But what about the first part where Imam Bukhari says the Mu'tazila believe that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are makhluk, are created. And he says this is in opposition to what the Muslims believe. Now who believes that? Who believes, besides the Mu'tazila, that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created? The Ash'aris, they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions are his effects, and his effects are creation itself. So his actions are created. They're explicit about this. This is what they believe. That's why they don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions subsist in his essence because nothing that's created can subsist in his essence. That's why they don't believe that the acts are sifat of his. They, not, they don't actually subsist with him. They are the creation itself. So when he says, and this is why it's the backbreaker, when he says that Imam Bukhari quotes or is referencing the Mu'tazila and they believe that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created and this is what in opposition to what the muslims say what the muslims believe well who also believes that the ashari's do so you're directly against imam bukhari on this position and why am i saying now i'm going to play it and, and show you how it's also proving that kalam he sees the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an act is an act why because why would he be bringing this after he mentions kalam right in the same paragraph what's the exactly exactly the that's that's what, what that's what I, I wanted to ask you to play it again that last part again because it's just very exactly yeah, yeah i i sent you that earlier abdu but you were busy you didn't see that this is why i actually recognized this even further when i was listening back to it i said wow there's also another thing he's not just proving right that the acts of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be uncreated because he's saying if the Mu'tazila believe the actions of Allah are created and this is in opposition to what the Muslims believe then Imam Bukhari is saying that the Muslims believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's actions are not created right they're not created but he notice when he is presenting that he is presenting that directly after he mentions Kalam Allah, and he gives a quote from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam when he uh, spoke to him, right? He's, he's bringing that directly after, meaning that he sees that as an action. Because if he didn't see that as an act of speech, then we would say, hold on a second, Imam Bukhari, what does this have to do with anything? What is the idea of the Mu'tazila's belief of the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being created have anything to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking? 
if his speech is not an act, it's an eternal sifa, which subsists in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, then it has nothing to do with the discussion over actions of Allah and whether they're created or not. You see? So he's clearly linking them together and showing you that the speech, the kalam Allah in this instance is an action. Okay, let me play it again. He says, except the Mu'tazila, they just the kalam of the one into that message. Of the Jahmiya, okay? They're not as extreme as the Jahmiya, but they're considered as a deviant sect. And the ulama differed whether they are out of the fold of Islam or not. We won't get into that masala. Anyways, he says on page 128, He says, when you recite the Quran, what you're reciting is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Allah said, Innani ana Allah, indeed I am Allah, there is no deity but me, fa'abudini, for worship me. Illa al Mu'tazila. He says, except the Mu'tazila, they do not say this. They claim, they claim that the fa'al... Okay, so notice see how he's connecting them. Right after Imam Bukhari is connecting these together. You have to understand this point is very important, guys. No, 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 Jake, 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 I advise, play it again, play, play it a, thir a third time, if, if, if possible, just that part. From the beginning. No, this is good, this is good. And the ulama differed whether they are out of the fold of Islam or not. We won't get into that masala. Anyways, he says on page 128, Listen what he said. When, when he's speaking about Kalam Allah, what is the example he's giving? When he spoke to Musa alayhi salam, when he spoke to Musa alayhi salam, that Kalam, that's what he's saying. And he's relating that, Imam Bukhari is relating that to the Quran itself, right? Because why? They're both Kalam Allah. The Quran is Kalam Allah. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam was also his Kalam. So he's linking them together. When you and and around, what's and what's being around. sorry sorry pause uh, sorry and, and and what's being denied here? So what's what's the claim he is uh, basically critiquing or refuting is the Mu'tazili position that the maqru that what's being recited is not kalamullah in the way we affirm it that it's a attribute of Allah. Because remember they say it's kalamullah. The Mu'tazila say it's kalamullah. But what they mean by it, the, 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 the type of idafa they uh, um, uh, express this with is that it is the kalam of Allah in the same way, let's say, like the bait of Allah is the bait of Allah, right? Is that uh, idafa of, uh, 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 like, let's say, ownership, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's created by Allah. But then what Imam Bukhari is saying here is that, no, our position is that what's being recited, these words, is... Kalamullah, right? Now, he's gonna what he's gonna go on to say is supposed to uh, affirm what is supposed to is supposed to critique what critique the claim that no, this is not an attribute of Allah. And then he instantly says, except for Al Mu'tazila, because for them the acts of Allah are created, so it's not an attribute of Allah. So that's explicitly that Imam Al Bukhari is saying that it is. Uh, um, an act, the maqru is an act that subsists in Allah's essence. By subsists in Allah's essence, all we mean is an act performed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so let me just finish playing this. Samuna. We won't get into that masala. Anyways, he says on page 128, <laughs> says when you recite the Quran, what you're reciting is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Allah said, Innani ana Allah, indeed I am Allah, there is no deity but me, fa'abudini, so worship me. Illa al Mu'tazila. So the only people who differ with this are the Mu'tazila, according to him. Now watch, now watch how he links it. He says, except the Mu'tazila, they do not say this. فَإِنَّهُمُ الدَّعَوْ They claim, أَنَّ فِعَلَ اللَّهِ مَخْلُوقُ They claim that the fi'al of Allah is created. So they claim that the act of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is created. Well, what does that have to do with anything? If when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam, right? If that was not an act of speech, then why is Imam Bukhari bringing this? 
Why is he bringing it? He's bringing it because he is telling you it is an act of speech and that act of speech is not created. It subsists with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He actually spoke it and his speech is uncreated. And it's an act. That's why he's telling you the Mu'tazila reject it because they say that the acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created. So if it's an act of speech, then it must be created because all of his actions are created. That's what he's telling you. And then he goes on to tell you, and the actions of the of the human being, of the servants, they are uh, they are created, which we agree with, no problem. Creation of Allah, they are uncreated, meaning that the. Uh, Sorry, he he says that the Mu'tazila say they're uncreated, and we say that they are created. The uh, the belief of the Mu'tazila is that the the person, the create the uh, you as a slave of Allah, you create your own actions. Your actions are not, are not a creation of Allah. وَهَذَا خِلَافُ عِلْمِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He says this is in, يعني, in opposition to the, the, what the Muslims know to be true. And this is in opposition to what the Muslims know to be true. What is in opposition to what the Muslims know to be true? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His actions are created. This is what the Mu'tazila say. Right? Not just a part about the actions of the human being being cre uh, uncreated. Yes, of course. But also, they say that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created. And this is in opposition to what the Muslims believe. This is what Imam Bukhari is saying. But who believes that? The Ash'aris believe that. And this is showing that they are not in line with the aqidah of Imam Bukhari. Very clearly. This is why I say it's the backbaker. I don't understand how Harun Khan quoted this and he thought somehow it's supporting his view. I really cannot even fathom it. Okay? So it's very clear. Imam Bukhari is saying that the Mu'tazila believe the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created. This goes against what the Muslims believe. Therefore, we believe, along with Imam Bukhari, that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not created. And he links that to the discussion of Kalam Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to Musa alayhi salam. That his speech when he spoke was an act of him speaking and it's not created. This is very clearly what he's saying. And the Ash'aris do not believe that. Okay, I think that's enough. I don't know if you have anything else to add on that, Abdu. I just need a second, yeah. Yeah, because uh, one point is, I mean, I can continue playing after that because then he actually mentions Imam Bukhari saying, well, this is the problem with the, the people who don't understand this. It's because they don't understand Arabic. And then we have Harun Khanj mentions this statement and says, yeah, you see, this is why these Salafis get it wrong because they don't understand Arabic and blah, 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 going on and on. When he didn't even understand what he just read was refuting his position directly. That's the irony in it. You see? I don't know if you're back. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I still need a second, but then I just honestly, um, I do not understand how Brother Harun brought that passage forward um you know in in you know his attempt to try to prove that the aqidah of Imam Bukhari is in line with the shaira that's um i i don't get it maybe i need a second i don't know just just, just yeah, digest I, I, i'm not sure I'm... The, 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 the the clip but um but I, I actually do need a second okay inshallah yeah yeah i'm gonna play the rest while you're waiting it's like another minute and then maybe you'll be ready by now إلا من تعلق من البصريين بكلام سنسوي كان مجوسيا فدعا الإسلام فقال الحسن أهلكتهم العجمة. Another important statement that he makes here, which uh, falls on the on the Salafis, the part of the Salafis more than it does on the Ashaira. الحسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى, he says regarding the uh, the deviant sect that arose very early on, the Jahmiya and the معطلة and the معتزلة, he says أهلكتهم العجمة. What destroyed them was their their عجمة, their their يعني their they did not have complete comprehension of the Arabic language. They had a deficiency in their in their Arabic. So that caused them to deviate. And they became destroyed as a result. Now, if you look at the Aima of the Ashaira from Imam Abu al-Hasan down, 
They were all wait, wait, these, Jake, all is, is this being like said that. in the same the clip? Is this a continuation? Oak, yes, plant? yes, it's a continuation. It's a direct continuation. Uh, I mean, the irony. Right okay. That's okay. what I'm saying. The irony <laughs> is he's saying the, the problem with this modern day Salafis, and he keeps using this quote, you know, modern day Salafi, if, and over and over like he's using it as a pejorative, Given what we've already presented from Imam Bukhari, I could be saying, well, the Ash'aris are the modern day Jahmiya. And I could be saying this over and over again, but I haven't been doing that. Okay. The point is, he goes on after reading this quote, which directly from Imam Bukhari refutes the Ash'ari position. He then goes on to this uh, uh, um, quoting from um, Hassan al Basri uh, saying that. Uh, the, the problem with these people is that they don't understand Arabic. And then he tries to connect that to the modern day Salafis, right? He tries to connect that to the modern day Salafis because we don't understand what we're reading. We don't understand anything, right? Meanwhile, what he just read, the irony is what he just read from Imam Bukhari directly refutes his entire position, right? Refutes the Ash'ari uh, method. So it's just so ironic, subhanAllah. Yeah, go ahead, Abdu, if you want to say something. No, you can continue playing, playing the rest of the clip. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much else to play from that. I mean, he goes on, let me see. I ascribe to the Aimma of the Ash'ari Raya. So this statement of, of, of Hassan al-Basri, you know, doesn't fall upon the Ash'ari Raya. It falls on the, on the opposite camp that is at odds with them, you know, which is the modern-day Salafis. They have very superficial understanding of the Arabic language. A few days ago, one Salafi came on here. And he goes on to tell a story about some personal story about some someone he spoke to. So I don't want to uh, get into that. But yeah, he's he's blaming it and and, and saying that this is uh, applicable. We can apply it to the modern day Salafi, right? Our problem is we just don't understand what Bukhari is saying because we don't understand any Arabic. We don't have any scholars that actually know Arabic who read it and you know, can comprehend it. Meanwhile, he is quoting from Imam Bukhari, directly refuting his position, and he doesn't even realize it. And we're the ones with the problem. Subhanallah. Yeah, and uh, also uh, an important point is, I mean, normally when, when this whole point of Ajma is brought up, it's, uh, you know, uh, in relation to the, uh, you know, scripturally transmitted attributes, the Safat al-Khabariya, and and how the text is understood and um uh, but like you know it would be very strange for brother Harun to say that the reason um uh the the, the uh, salafis have this interpretation is because of ujma because of their uh, you know lack of proficiency in the arabic language because the early ashadis held to the exact, like nearly carbon copies of the Salafi positions, right? When it comes to the Safat al Khabariya, right? So, so, um, uh, and, and, I mean, at least, like, you really couldn't deny that at least whatever uh, um, interpretation you're going to find uh, uh, within the Salafi position is going to be found somewhere, uh, at least with regard to the Fahd al or Safat al is going to be found somewhere within the Ash'ari school, and more specifically, the early Ash'ari school and the early Ash'ari Aimas. So, the, uh, uh, um, did the uh, uh, early uh, Aimma of the Ash'ari, alayhim uh, rahmatullah, um, did they uh, have Ujma too? Of course, of course they didn't. So, it's uh, quite to, to make that claim. Yeah. I've got uh, I've got one more clip on uh, the issue of kalam, and it's directly related to this because, as I said, this not only proves that Imam Bukhari does not believe that the actions of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are created, as the Ash'aris claim, he believes that they're not created, they're uncreated. It also proves that he sees uh, the instance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala speaking to Musa alayhi salam as an action. He sees it as an action. Which means what? That his act of speaking is tied to his will and his power, right? Because his actions are obviously tied to his will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And, and Harun Kanj says that this is the position of um, Ibn Taymiyyah and then says nobody before him said this. So let's listen to this after we just proved to you that this is what Imam Bukhari said, okay? Okay. 
when he comes across the Sifa of Kalam, he says the Sifa of Kalam is connected to the Irada and the Qudra of Allah. When he says he, he's referring to Ibn Taymiyyah. He's saying that the Sifa of Kalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking, is connecting to the will and power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, yani he connects the Kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah, to Qudra and Irada. So he says when Allah wishes, through his Qudra he speaks. And when Allah wishes, through his Qudra he remains silent. The Salaf, on the other hand, they didn't have this, yani, uh, this uh, way of looking at the Mas'ala. Yani. He said the Salaf, on the other hand, did not have this understanding. <laughs> we just read from Imam Bukhari, and he read it himself, where he does. You won't find it in the Hanabila works, you won't find it in the Ash'ari works, you won't find it in the Maturidi works, where they make a connection between Kalam and Qudra and Irada. You won't find this anywhere, right? Even though Imam Ahmed says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks by his will and his power, right? He speaks whenever he wills, right? <laughs> what does this mean? He speaks whenever he wills. Think about this. If I Ma'ani, they'll mention Irada by itself, Qudra by itself, Ilm by itself, and also by itself is Kalam. It's not connected to Irada and Qudra. Yeah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes, he'll give ability to his creation, to whom he wishes of his creation to be his eternal Kalam. You see that? You see how he twisted now? Yeah, what does it mean for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak when he wishes? That means for him to give the ability to his creation to hear something. That's what it means. You see that? But the kalam of Allah, it's not like the kalam of Allah. It's not like yani, through the irada and the qudra of Allah, Allah can speak. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mausuf bil kalam. He is attributed to speech pre-eternity. Okay? But with them, with Ibn Taymiyyah and uh, his adherents, they believe that it's through the irada and the qudra of Allah that Allah speaks. Not Allah allows his creation to, to hear his kalam. That it's through the qudra and irada of Allah that Allah speaks. And then he remains silent when he, when he wishes through his qudra and irada. Hopefully that clarifies the difference between the three So, so, so the idea, the, the idea is that there is, uh, what, what Brother Khalid is saying is that there is a distinction between speaking and giving someone else the ability to hear my speech, right? So let's say I'm constantly speaking and then uh, there's a difference between that, between giving somebody the ability to hear my speech. So when Imam Ahmad uh, uh, says uh, uh, um, that Allah uh, uh, has always been, uh, uh, um, you know, speaking whenever he wills. That Allah speaks whenever he wills. Uh, does that mean that uh, 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 he, he does? Is Imam Ahmad referring to the act of speaking, or the act of giving someone else the ability to hear my speech? I mean, that's first of all, that's that's a, that that's strange. I think speaking is just the act of speaking. We're again back to the language, right? And then uh, the second thing is that um, this goes back to the whole idea of what it means to hear an eternal meaning that has no succession within it and that uh, uh, um, uh, is a single meaning, is, is, is one meaning to which all meanings, which all words refer, all the, 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 the wahi of Allah refers. And for us to hear that, is almost unintelligible, which is why when the brothers were asked that question in the room, they said, well, it's a kayfiyya that we do not know. It, it, it happens upon a kayfiyya that is not oh, understood. Oh, I'm going to play that too. I'm going to play that later. That's yeah, It's going to be a big one. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. That, that's that's really important because, well, I mean, if you're going to say and just that, real quickly, Abdu, I hope Nizam, I yeah. hope you're going to be around and stick around for that because I we saw what you saying about the kafia and i'm going to show that harun kanj directly contradicted himself directly contradicted himself when asked about it he says oh it's the kafia but we don't know what the kafia is and he goes on to tell you he doesn't know the reality of the sifa which is exactly what ibn taymiyyah says he says that the kafia is the uh haqiqa or the reality of the sifa and nobody claims to know that but then when we say that, we were told, oh, no, if you even believe in a kafia, then this is against Tawheed. You, you guys have, have lost the plot. This is what we're told. And I'm going to show you that Harun Khan said that. He, he explicitly affirms a kafia for Allah, says that he has one, but we don't know what it is, right? And then he goes on and gives an argument refuting that and says that it's illogical. But anyway, go ahead, Abdul. 
Yeah, uh, this is. I think this is a very, very important point because uh, you see, when when see, we're not allowed doing that, right? We're not allowed to do that in the sense that when we say that Allah does istiwa, or that Allah is above ala al haqiqa, as in we understand what it means to be above, and we know what the Arabs understand from the word and from the context, and that specific meaning that even Imam al Tabari affirmed, we mean that and. We say nothing of the kaifiyah because we have no knowledge of the kaifiyah, and that which we have no knowledge of its essence, uh, uh, we couldn't have any kind of knowledge of its kaifiyah, the kaifiyah of its sifat. And this is exactly the position of Ibn Taymiyyah. So when we say that, and you guys, you guys, uh, uh, it's it's almost like uh, the brothers want to say that, like, look, what you're saying is unintelligible because I mean, what it means to be above is that even Imam Al Razi, uh, rahimahullah, says this right when he says that. You know what it means to be above when he has uh, when he, in his back and forth with some of uh, um, the sects who affirm aboveness but deny uh, jismiya, for example, right? And, and and he's like, well, that's what it means. It doesn't make sense, right? This is what it means for it to be like that. And you guys couldn't affirm this without these lawazim, and that's day and night what they have coming at us. I mean, it's nothing else really. And then when you are asked how this a single undifferentiated eternal meaning is heard without any succession any letters any in any of that how this meaning is heard or whatever the question specific question was you can appeal to our ignorance of the kaifiya but then the mu'tazila do that same ilzam with your position and they say well like, look what you're saying doesn't make sense so why don't you guys do like you know even more tanzi and say that no there's no sifa of kalam uh, uh, because the, what you're affirming uh, simply is not kalam, right? Because the lazim of kalam or the meaning of kalam necessitates that, you know, it has such and such features. Just like you tell us that the lazim of yad is for it to have such and such features. And for ulu, the lazim of it is for it to have such and such entailments of jismiyyah. Uh, um, you can do that with us, but we can't tell you that, wait, um, um, there's a problem here because there's a specific lazim for what you're affirming of Allah in terms of the, the kalam and even in terms of ru'ya, ru'ya is a huge one, right? And the, the Mu'tazila again, they come and say like what you guys are affirming really isn't ru'ya, it's just more knowledge. <laughs> and, you know, back to ujma and the Arabic language, what Arabs mean by ru'ya, what Arabs mean by alu, what Arabs mean by hearing and speaking, right? And uh, um, this is a very big problem and it goes back to the discussion which can be like a discussion for another day but that really, I think, and we've said this time and time uh, again, Jake, that uh, um, that the, the really the, the most uh, uh, consistent positions, it seems to be that the most consistent positions amongst all these, you know, uh, the sects within the, within the fold of Islam, I'm not going to say within the fold of Islam because I'm including the Baltaniya, but really those who claim to be Muslims is the Baltaniya, like the, the Baltaniya Ismaili who do that double negation thing, and uh, 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 the Salafi Taymian position. Because what those guys are telling you on the other extreme, the, 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 the Balkanese are telling you, look, guys, if you're going to do this whole thing about, you know, Tanzi and uh, Lawazim and affirming this has uh, that Lazim and that has another Lazim and there's going to be Tashbih. And if you do that with every Sifa and ev somebody comes and tells you that there's such and such Lawazim, the logical conclusion of that, where it's going to take you is to that, you know, utter double negation. This is a complete negation. You know, he neither exists nor does not, he, he, he doesn't exist and he does not not exist in that position. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah, on the other hand, or the Salafis in general, but obviously uh, uh, um, uh, philosophically expressed in the best way by Ibn Taymiyyah, because remember, our school is not, or our sect is not a, um, a, 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 a one that is immersed in philosophy. But anyway, Ibn Taymiyyah, he's just consistent. What he says is, look, you already affirm attributes and you deny knowledge of kaifiyah, you affirm knowledge, and when we tell you that, look, knowledge in, in the shahid, in our observed reality, is uh, arad, and there's no knowledge that we have ever observed that's not an accident. Yet you affirm it of Allah and you say it's not an accident. It's sifa. And uh, we, we, we don't know any kind of knowledge except for necessary and um, inferential knowledge, for example. But Allah's knowledge is nothing like that. And these lawazim can keep coming. So what Ibn Taymiyyah is saying is like, look guys, we know the abstract meanings of things. We know the ishtirak, the qadr the, 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 um, mushtarak, which is, which is a problematic word apparently these days, even though the muhtakalameen themselves affirm it. Uh, and we affirm these things of Allah 
with a complete negation of any knowledge of kaifiya. <laughs> That's Ibn Taymiyyah's position. And he's saying, to be consistent, guys, let's do that with all of the sifat. Fine, if according to the Arabic language, yad in this context does not mean yad al as, as Ibn Taymiyyah uh, uh, interprets it, fine, that's, that's okay. But let's make the judge the Arabic language and uh, the, 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 the understanding of the recipients of the Qur'an, and let's apply this principle consistently. But then, uh, um, but then when we want to do that consistently, no, you need to be selective and say, no, in that specific attribute that you're affirming, there's this lazim that, I'm sorry, you can't appeal to an ignorance of, of kaifiyya in your affirmation of it, even though I can do it in the other ones. That's uh, not fair. So, sorry, sorry for the rant. Yeah, yeah carry on, Jake. Yeah. No, no, so just on that point, le let me play a clip from, look, you want to talk about consistency. I'm sorry, with all due respect to Harun Kanch, he was not even consistent within a couple weeks of him giving his presentation. So let me give you his first statement, which he said in this lecture, Imam Bukhari's Aqidah. This is his response to a question. Listen to this about the kafiyah. So Nizam, I hope you're listening, my friend. So the second question she asked was, you also say Allah's kalam has no beginning nor end. Does that mean when Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam, uh, Musa knew all of Allah's speech with no beginning and end. Basically, this question is relating to the other questions that are being asked uh, uh, as well regarding Allah's speech. Does it does Allah speak at a time, and then you know, uh, then he doesn't speak at a time? You know, is it time based the speech of Allah? This is no, uh, no, so like I said, question. always always compare it to the Ruya of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Ruya okay. of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When we say Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, it doesn't mean that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has to be in a direction or at a specific time because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is far beyond that. He is yani, uh, far beyond being limited to time and space. Similarly, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, is far beyond being limited to time and space. But the ta'alluq that takes place between the abid and him hearing that speech, that takes place in time and space. Yani. But the actual kalam is beyond that. Yani. It's just one of those messages that you don't know the haqiq, we don't know the actual, the how, the kaifiyah. Listen, he, he, he kind of cut himself off of what he's saying, but listen very closely what he says. The ta'alluq that takes place between the abid and him hearing that speech, that takes place in time and space, yani. But the actual kalam is beyond that, yani. It's right. just one of those messages that you don't know the haqiq, we don't know the actual, the how, the kaifiyah, how it will actually take place, yani. It's just one of those issues where we don't know the haqiqa, we don't know the how, we don't know the kaifiyah. So what is he doing? He's using the haqiqa or the reality of the sifa or the reality of whatever it is, the speaking, Whatever it is, we don't know the haqiqa, we don't know the reality, and he's conflating that as being synonymous with the kafiya. We don't know the kafiya. And that's exactly what we're saying. We affirm it because it's been uh, mentioned in the nusus, but the actual reality, we're not accustomed to that reality, yani, because everything, yani, we're, we're limited to our, our senses, the five senses that we have. So everything that we, uh, that we hear of or see, we try and straight away imagine it according to things that we have experienced in this dunya. The experiences of the akhirah, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the hearing of his speech, is something completely different to us, Yani. It's different to our yani, limitations that we are accustomed to. All right. So, you see that. So, so exactly what we say. Yeah, we say the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Yadullah, whatever you want to say. We say this consistently for all of the attributes, for all of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We, we do not know the kafiya, And what does that mean? That means we don't know the haqiqah. We don't know the reality of the sifa. Why? Because we're not acquainted with it. We're not acquainted. We, we, nobody is. We're not seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. Right? So we cannot base it based on, uh, as he said, our appearances of other things in this life. That's not what it is. Right? So very clearly... And, and, and what I'm going to show in the next clip, because if somebody wants to try to make real of uh, Harun Khan's statement, you won't be able to do it because it's going to be very clear in the next clip where he directly contradicts what he just said. He didn't say, no, there's no kafiya whatsoever. And to even say or suggest that there's a kafiya, this is problematic. This is uh, illogical. No, what he goes on to say is that in this clip, first clip that I just played, that there is a kafiyah, but we don't know what it is. And what that means is 
We don't know the reality of the sifa. We don't know the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kalam. Okay? Now let me play you in just a week or so later where our good friend Nizam, who I hope he's still in the audience, interacts with Harun Kanj on this point and listen to the different answer he gives. Shit, there's a question here by uh, brother uh, brother Freddy. Why can't why can Allah not have a state or a mode? Why can Allah not have a state or a mode? For what we just mentioned, state or mode, kafia kafia is impossible. Haklan and naklan and akwal of the salaf. Did you hear that? Kafia is impossible based on what he says naklan aklan it's based on the text and the uh the akl based on the text and reason and what the salaf said the aqwal of, of the salaf based on all of those it's it's impossible well wait a second brother harun you just affirmed kafia in the previous room in the in, in uh imam bukhari room Anything that has a state or a mode is in need of taqsis, is in need of a fashioner, okay? Uh, the fact that you are made in a particular way as a human, you have uh, certain physical traits and description and a surah to you, this necessitates that there be a fashioner for you, that someone fashion you in this way. Okay, what he's saying here is, because there's this idea of taqsis, what he's talking about is, he just means that there, the thing in question is particular. It's just a particular, it's not, it's not a universal. It's something which is distinct. For me, for example, Jake, I am a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I am distinct. There's something that is unique about me uh, that makes me distinct from other things and there are, for example, I could be a little bit taller, a little bit more handsome, I could be much more handsome. Uh, all of these things, right, that could have been different about me, according to the uh, Ash'aris, proves that there must be a creator who makes them a certain way, because they could have been a different way, and there, so there must be a creator who makes them a certain way. All it means is, you are a particular, you are a certain way, and you could be a different way in a very general sense. That's all he's saying. And he's saying that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a kafiya, then the same would apply to him. If he is in a certain particular way, then it would call into question how could he be the creator because he would need to be, something would have needed to create him, astaghfirullah. He couldn't be the creator. Something would have to create him because he would need someone to be particularizing him, to be making him in a certain way. This is what he's saying, but let me keep playing. Otherwise, like who fashions you? It's either you fashion yourself, which is mustahil, which is doesn't, it's illogical, or you are created like this without a fashioner, which is also mustahil, illogical. The only logical... Uh, See that where you there's only three options. Did you create yourself? Well, that's contradictory. Were you created and yet you don't have a creator? Well, that doesn't make any sense. Now he goes to the last option. Um, answer is that there was a fashioner that fashioned you in this way. Or was there a fashioner, someone who fashioned you and created you in this way? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes back to the wahdaniyah of Allah. When the scholars speak about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say Allah is one in being. And what they mean is one in being is that there is no one and nothing that resembles Allah. And also that the that of Allah is one and not made up of parts and portions and, uh, and limitations. Because anything that has parts, portions, limitations, by default, it is in need of a muhassis, a fashioner. And we've already established that Allah has no beginning, no end. Uh, I was um, I was having this discussion with. Uh, now here comes Nizam, where he comments on the same issue. Listen, he tries to clarify. He asks, "Well, 
is it okay to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a kafiya, but we don't know what it is? Or do we have to reject kafiya in totality? Listen to this. Some of our friends here. Um, and you've kind of already mentioned the answer, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Um, see, when Imam Malik said, Istawa ghair majhul, istawa malum ghair majhul, well, kafiya ghair makul, meaning the how is inconceivable. And I was discussing with some of my brothers here that does that now mean that there is no how whatsoever? Like, can't we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants mercy from his uh, dominion? Uh, his hands are outstretched, uh, sending mercy. I mean, I'm still using these terminologies from Quran and Sunnah, but uh, in my mind, I'm making an effort to negate anything that comes to it. Yet, I'm still talking about you could say a, a kind of a how, uh, if that makes sense. So I'm just kind of confused if, if, if it's the same thing to say that there is no how, it's the same thing as saying that the how is inconceivable. There sense? is no how when he, there is no how when it comes to the that of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Okay. There you go. So we cannot be accused of maybe there's ambiguity. Maybe he, he meant no. Very clearly in the first clip, he affirmed a kafiyah but said we don't know what it is. In the second clip, where we're playing right now, very clearly, is giving him the option. Are you saying, wait, there's a kafiyah but it's inconceivable, we don't know what it is, so on and so forth? Or are you saying, no, there's no kafiyah at all in reality? But if you were to make that wheel of those verses in accordance to the Arabic language or under context, then there's not a problem with putting a how to work. Not a problem at all. See. Like if you were to say yani, Rabbuna means that Allah sends down an angel to represent him, because it's mentioned in the hadith another hadith of Imam al Nasai that it's actually an angel that descends to the lowest heaven in the third part of the night. Um, then not a problem. There would be a actual kafiyah to it. A kafiyah of an angel coming down at a certain time and this angel has limitations, he has direction, he has a, a surah to it. Not a problem. You can put a kafiyah if you want to do that wheel of it. But if you don't want to make that wheel of it and you want to stay safe and you want to stay in accordance with the way of the Salaf and you want to ascribe them as being sifat of Allah that we don't know of, then you can't put a kafiyah to it. You have to say, be like at all. Be a difference of opinion, uh, Sheikh Haru. You know so he says very clearly, what he's talking about there is if you make that wheel, then you can say there's a kaf, there's a kafiyah, because in that case, and you're talking about the angels, there's a kafiyah of the angels descending or whatever it is, right? But he's not saying that there's a kafiyah when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very clearly. You know what the Salafis actually believe? Now he's going to contrast this and say what the Salafis believe. This is explicitly mentioned in their works up. But they say, that he does have a cape, but we just don't know it. They go a step further and they say, there is a qadr mushtarak min al-tashbih bayn al-khaliq wa khalqi. There is a portion of resemblance. Sorry, did he just? Sorry, I'm sorry. Did, did he just say that that um the Salafis say that there is a qadr min tashbih? Yeah, yeah. Listen again. But they say bila kaif naalamu that he does have a kaif, but we just don't know it. They go a step further and they say. There is a qadr mushtarak min al-tashbih bayn al-khaliq wa khalqi. Do we, do we say that, Abdul? Is that what we say? No comment, man. I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> there is a portion of resemblance. There is a portion of re resemblance between the creation and the creator. Where did that, where did this uh, statement come from? It came as an entailment of doing its bad of kafiyah. Mm. So from doing its bad of kafiyah, affirming a kafiyah, it entails tashbih, according to him. That's what he's saying. 
Meanwhile, he affirmed Kafia in the in the Imam Bukhari room when being questioned about the kalam, kalam Allah. He said, "We don't know that we don't know the kafia. and what he meant by that, he said it. We don't know the haqiqa. We don't know the reality of it, which is what we say. We say when we don't know the kafia, we're saying we don't know the reality. So which one is it, Harun? So they're actually affirming kafia. All they're negating is that we don't yet know it. That's why if you listen carefully to them, they'll say, look, the only reason we don't know it is why we haven't seen God yet. We haven't seen anything that looks like God yet. And they'll stop there. So what you understand from that is, if you were to, yani for, for argument's sake, if you were to see God, then that would mean that you, the, that you would understand the kafia and you would be able to express it to others. Okay, that's it. So, I mean, what I have, what I'm trying to show here is Harun Khan is inconsistent. Okay, he's very clearly saying that uh, in the, in the first instance that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has a kafia, but we do not know, we do not know what it is because we don't know the reality of it. And in the second instance, he's saying to even affirm a kafia is problematic. Why? Because of this um, argument from Taqsis, which is that if something is in a particular way, and what we mean by that, and people need to understand this is very general. It just means if, if the being in question is a particular being, right? So if he is in a certain way, then he would need a creator for him, a fashioner for him to make him that certain way. In a very general sense, he's using this as an unrestricted sort of principle. And the problem with that is because then that would lead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually not being a particular thing. He couldn't be a particular thing. And therefore, you would have to then affirm divine simplicity and a radical notion of divine simplicity, which the Ash'aris actually reject. In order to affirm this type of argument, which he's using, you would have to affirm a radical notion of divine simplicity where God is just this pure sort of abstract principle. He's not a particular being, you see. So not only is he contradicting himself, he's making an argument against affirming any type of kafia based on things that contradict his own positions. And as we showed last time with uh, uh, my discussion with Minhaji, where he agrees that Abu hassan al-Ash'ari affirms two hands for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question would be, why does he have two instead of one or three? Why does he have two eyes instead of one or three or anything else? That would mean he needs a fashioner to make him in a particular way. Why does he have uh, seven attributes instead of eight? Why does he have eight attributes instead of 10? And so on and for so forth. So he would need a fashioner because he's in a particular way, which means you must accept a radical notion of divine simplicity, which he's not consistent with. So the, number one, we don't accept this argument in the form that he's presented it, okay? Because we, we know, first of all, it's, we don't accept it as a rational principle and it contradicts with the text because we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a being that actually exists, that is a particular being, which even the, um, even the mutakalimun accept this, right? They have the famous saying, Allahu shayyan la kal ashya, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a thing. He's a being, he's a thing that is unlike other things. He's a particular thing that is unlike other things, right? So it's very clear to me that uh, Brother Harun does not have a consistent position when it comes to this. He can, you know, he can come out and clarify it, but I hope that uh, Brother Nizam in the audience will come up and ask a question about this because it's very clear that he's contradicting himself. And I hope that you understand why this way of arguing against kafia is problematic. Because if you affirm anything really positively distinct about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the question could be, well, why, does he, why is he like this instead of like that? And then you are left without any creator. Or you're going to say a stock for the law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs a creator, which is this abstract sort of principle, which is ridiculous, which nobody affirms from the, from the Sunnis. We don't affirm that. Okay. 
So anyway, I hope that's clear. I don't know if you have any comments, Abdul. Yeah, just, I mean, just real quick. Of course, we 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 need to know if what uh, um, Brother Harun means is the kafiya of our hearing of Allah's kalam, for example, or the kafiya of us seeing Allah, for example, not the kafiya of the sufa itself. But but I think it, it's just going to crash into the exact same point because um, I don't think it makes sense to 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 to, to even affirm anything and say that it. Uh, doesn't have a kafiya. Obviously, it depends on what you mean by a kafiya, right? Um, now, the, 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 this all revolves around dalil taqsis, right? That if something exists in a particular way, then it must have a, a, a muhassas. There must be a cause that's specified for it to exist in that particular way. But then, uh, uh, this, uh, if, if you really take this principle, uh, um, um, as you seem to be taking it in the absolute, then what this leads to is divine simplicity. In fact, what it leads to is what we spoke about a while ago, which is the position of the Baltaniya and the double negation, if you really want to um, take it to its logical conclusion. Because um, all you're saying when, you're, when, when, when you mean that, when you, when you say that something is in a particular way uh, and it requires a muhassas, is that, uh, I mean, at least the correct way to say it, so what we should be saying, is that uh, something is in a particular way, and it could have been in another way, therefore, something made it in this way and not the other way. Uh, uh, and that applies to things that, for example, could have failed to exist. Uh, I could have had one less arm, I could have... Uh, as Jake said, taller, shorter, more handsome, less handsome. That that, that it's it's uh, 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 applies to contingent beings whose uh, uh, attributes are put together, and there is taqsis done by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. In what image He wills, He put you together. Now, uh, uh, is that going to apply in the absolute, in the sense that every being? that exists in a particular way must have something uh, external to it that caused it to exist in that way? Well, you affirm things about Allah. You say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, you affirm in essence, in addition to seven attributes, although there's uh, uh, um, you know, a difference of opinion between uh, 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 in the school about uh, some, some of those attributes, but regardless, you say that he has knowledge. Um, uh, you say that uh, he uh, has power. You say many things about him. In fact, you say you saying he can be seen is not just uh, uh, something that is uh, uh, attributed to us, our act of seeing. It's relational. And then you have to say that relations don't exist, which is another Ashari position that is used to um, uh, get out of some of these problems. That's the ta'aluqat and how they're non-existent. So, so um, uh, uh, it for us, it doesn't make sense for something to exist without there being a way it exists. I mean, you merely expressing that Allah is like this and like that, you you describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah describing himself in the Quran, means he exists in a particular way. Now, somebody might say, but wait, you saying these things about Allah, Allah is, is, is not the same as you speaking about the kaifiyah. Yes, but what we're saying is that it doesn't make sense for these to be attributed to Allah and for there to be an actual fact of the matter out there where uh, um, um, that, that, that what we predicate actually corresponds to without that being in a particular way. I mean, it's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just part of what it is. But, it, it, but I think the way they're using way here, they're, I think the way they're using a kaifiya, the howness that they're describing here, I think is basically about their, their talk of uh, ajsab. And arad and stuff like that, uh, and uh, uh, of course, anybody who read Ibn Taymiyyah is not going to make this point. Even Arazi, actually, he talks about it a lot. But, but uh, um, th there's nothing really because um, um, the brother was talking about logic. There's nothing really in this logical structure of this uh, uh, ilzam that you're uh, um, uh, presenting to us uh, that differs from. A similar argument we present to you and say that well okay if you say that Allah has these seven attributes why couldn't you have had eight 
If you say that Allah has attributed with uh, um, um, knowledge, why could he, uh, couldn't he have not been attributed to knowledge? And then you're going to say it's necessary for him. It's, it's necessary for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we say. Ibn Taymiyyah says, uh, yeah, for example. I mean, there's nothing that is affirmed of Allah that isn't uh, uh, necessary for him in terms of uh, his essential attributes, right? So, so um, uh, this this whole idea of a mukhassis, you're just not seeing really how you're shooting yourself in the foot. And what you mean by a denial of kaifiyah is 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 uh, um, probably this shady idea that once deconstructed, you will realize that just circles back to the exact same point and the exact same exam applies to you. The exact same argument applies to your position. Whatever you utter of an existence, really. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on to the next point, inshallah. Wait, you, you were saying that to me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm fortunately running short on time. I can join back in a while, but um, let's just try to move fast through whatever we can move fast through here. Um, so... Um, okay, so we were going to mention something about uh, the ulu of Allah subhanahu wa Allah's aboveness, Allah's transcendence of creation. Uh, okay, so let's read a little bit here. Uh, so it was warned. With regard to the Jahmiyyah, and he said, "Man zama an al Rahman ala al Arsh istawa ala khilaf." Okay, no, no, sorry. So Mubarak said, We do not say, as the Jahmiya say, that that Allah is here on, on earth. Because as we know, the, 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 the Jahmiya, at least uh, a part of the Jahmiya, were Hululiyah. Um, actually, there is actually a sect of Jahmiya that you say that Allah is neither inside the world nor outside of it. Uh, so amongst them, the, 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 that position is there, but then here uh, Ibn Barak is responding to the claim that uh, 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 Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is here on Earth. He's saying no, bel ala ala al arsh istawa. Indeed, He is uh, above His throne, Subhanahu wa Taala. Right um, now, what does this mean, really? Um, uh, the I I I I think I remember hearing the brother saying something like, um, "Yes, yeah, that, that, that because the Jahmi are uh, Hululiyah here, what Ibn Mubarak is saying is simply that Allah is distinct from creation in the sense that He is um, uh, not within creation, therefore He is outside of creation in the sense that He's distinct from creation. Like, so He's not here on Earth, but He's Outside of creation, uh, but what Brother Harun wants to say is that Ibn Barak is, Ibn Barak is saying that not uh, to mean like you know the real outside or the real aboveness that we affirm. No, it's simply to mean that he's not within creation. Period. It's just like mahd sent, you know, just 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 a negation, right? That he's not, uh, uh, and their eventual position, of course, is he's neither inside nor outside. Now, where are you getting that from? The words of Ibn Barak, I don't get it. He's responding to somebody who's saying that Allah is here on earth. And he's saying, no, bel ala al-arsh istawa. He's on the arsh. Now, what is any Arab or non-Arab going to understand by this? Alu of Sultan. And, the, and, and he said that the Jahmi um, denies the superiority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where does the Jahmi deny that? He does not. <laughs> he does not deny that. Uh, so... Um, at least as far as I know, uh, 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 this is clearly an affirmation of ulu, as we affirm it. He's saying he's not here on earth, he's been ulu. So, uh, and, I mean, that, that uh, uh, really, uh, uh, as usual, as we saw with the earlier text that we brought for forward, um, the only way you can uh, work your way around this is to really read into the text and uh, uh, stretch it beyond its capacity in the same way you would uh, uh, try to interpret certain understandings of kalam as uh, this uh, 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 eternal uh, single meaning instead of like what Arabs actually know by the word kalam, right? And here he's saying he's not on earth, he's ala al-arsh. 
just like we saw with Imam Tabari and how the example he gave about getting on a bed right before affirming the meaning of ulu that is related to that example specifically. That's what the Arabs understand by it. Now, of course, again, because of the ujma again, some people think that when these examples are given, we're basically saying that that's, that's, that's the howness of the ulu. Of course not. Just as uh, you say uh, we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, um, 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 in a way that's just completely un- un- not understood. We don't know the reality of it. Uh, and it's completely unlike the way we hear things here. But you're affirming the meaning unless unless the word is just completely meaningless. You just replace it with any other meaningless word, right? Uh, and just as you yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge, but it's nothing like the knowledge we know. It's similar to that, right? So... We can give examples, but uh, um, um, there's a complete uh, denial of tashbih and there is tanzi. Now, by the way, earlier when he was saying they affirm tashbih, so that's a really bad way of expressing it. And we can do this whole tashniya thing back and forth, as in we can choose off putting words and describe our opposing positions. Uh, with these, and that happens between the ulama, yani. But um, uh, honestly, it's, it's, not, it's not very beneficial uh, in, our, in, our, in our specific context, yani. So, so um, and Ibn Taymiyyah does this time, time and time again, right? You talk about Tajsim and Ibn Taymiyyah says that you worship nothingness. You can do that. But so what he means by Tashbih is again he's referring to the Qadr Mushtarak. Ibn Taymiyyah does not affirm any Tashbih. In fact, there is no Qadr Mushtarak for Ibn Taymiyyah extra mentally. Whatever Qadr Mushtarak there is, is mental. I mean, that's there. I mean, I mean, I'm quite sure the brothers who are speaking about this don't know this. And if you want quotes upon quotes from amongst the Mutakadimin and and the scholars of uh, the Ash'ara, rahimahumullah, about Qadr Mushtarak, affirming Qadr Mushtarak, in fact, uh, uh, um, um, like um, more explicitly than Ibn Taymiyyah, affirming it uh, 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 as um, a univocal predication, that's available as well, by the way. Right? So so um, this whole talk about Qadr Mushtarak is, is uh, uh, kind of pointless. So so that's the point about uh, Ulu. Uh, um, okay, so the Mubayana here, the way that dis- the distinctness and the separation, the way it's affirmed by the Salaf is the Fawqiyya, and you see this time and time again in many similar quotes, he's not on earth, in the sky. And the Mubayana here is affirmed how the distinctness or the separation or the aboveness of Allah is affirmed that, oh no, he's not here, he's ala al-Arsh. Ala al-Arsh, understand it the way they affirm it, not the way you understand it. Um, now here, uh, okay, so there's a point here, right? Uh, so he warned against the Jahmiya and said, Man za'am rahman ala al-arshistawa. Now this is <laughs> going to drive the point I was making right now home. Whoever claims that al-Rahman, al-arshistawa, whoever claims that, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, the most merciful is uh, uh, you know, uh, rose above his throne. Ala khilaf ma yuqir fi qulub al in a way that is different from what is affirmed within the hearts of the laity, of the ordinary average Muslim. Right? Fahuwa jahmi is a jahmi. Uh, and then he says here, oh, Muhammad al-Shaybani Jahmi. But of course, this point, Muhammad al-Shaybani, um, 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 uh, uh, there's talk about this because there's a Muhammad al-Shaybani who is a companion of Abu Hanifa and uh, either he's not the one intended or there were false attributions to him. That's that's generally the position of scholars. But the important part here is that whoever affirms this ulu in a way other than the way that the awam affirm it, and the laity affirms it is a jahmi. Now the brother keeps mentioning uh, in 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 in, um, in their room how oh we don't say this we're not jahmi we don't say this we're not jahmi. Of course, Ashar are not jahmi. I mean, the Ibn Taymiyyah explicitly says this, right? Ibn Taymiyyah says that uh, wh- whoever uh, doesn't know the difference between Ashar and jahmi uh, doesn't neither knows Ashar nor 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 uh, does he know the jahmi. Uh, so uh, or whoever calls the Ashar jahmi. However, there's uh, there's a difference between uh, uh, there are different levels of tajahum even, even for like even uh, with Imam Ahmad right uh, there's a difference between uh, the 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 jahmiyyah that's like basically bil uh, khusus right that that's specifically that sect that get that says their god has no names or attributes which is uh, um, 
uh, which we do take the, the, the scholars by consensus and the Salaf by consensus. There's no disagreement on the Kufr of. Uh, and so there's a difference between that and mere tajahum, which obviously we're not going to say that Shaira or Kafra, what are they, right? So, so, so the, the, uh, um, there can be tajahum without having the, the, the khusus of being a jahmi in that sense that takes you out of the fold of Islam, right? So, uh, um, uh, and, and some of the Salaf, you'd see them saying this, like the, that if he, for example, if you ask somebody about ulu, or if you ask somebody about uh, kalam or whatever other question, and either they don't answer or they give you like a vague answer, uh, tajahum. you're going to find there is tajahum within him. So it's not necessarily a jahmi in the sense that he's uh, out of the fold of Islam, uh, uh, um, and and that, that should be clear, right? So, but here he's saying the am, you affirm it as the laity affirmed it. Otherwise, he's a jahmi. Uh, now, uh, um, how do the am affirm it? Uh, so, so uh, uh, let's let. Uh, I mean, I mean. Uh, Generally, across the board, you find amongst Ashari scholars and mutakallimin what the Amma do believe about the, the Quran and what the Zahir Quran actually is. Uh, uh, and the Zahir, for many of them, if not most of them, is Tashbih. Uh, and here uh, is Taftazani uh, 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 saying this. So he said, Sharh al Maqasid, if it is said, Iva kan ad din al haqq if the true deen or the true religion is actually a negation of place and a negation of direction, right? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then uh, what's up basically with the uh, uh, revelations, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the uh, um, uh, Quran, the Torah, the Zabur, the Anjil, uh, uh, um, uh, why do these books uh, and why do the uh, um, prophetic narrations and traditions right? Now he says that why is it the case that if the true deen is the a denial or a negation of uh, place and direction, why is the Quran and Sunnah and all the books of Allah in general full? Why are they full of indications uh, uh, and affirmations, affirmations of that, of what? Of the place and the direction that the true deen must negate, right? Without there being a single spot, uh, you know, without there being a single, without there being an, an, a single statement uh, 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 denying that. Um, and he's saying he mentioned this in several places, and then he says. والتحقق لما تقرر في تقرر في فطرة العقلاء مع اختلاف الأديان والأراء التوجه إلى العوين الدعاء. Now here he affirms the فطرة of the عقلاء, the people of reason, uh, people in, in in general, amongst different religions, right, uh, and who have different opinions, اختلاف الأديان والأراء, uh, uh, that they incline towards علو, the direction of when they do dua, right. Uh, uh, and they basically raise their hands to the sky. So, so, uh, um, so that's the filter, right? Now, it's then here is answering, right? So, so that's actually uh, two problems. He's saying that Zahir is like that, and people generally affirm Allah or they incline towards it like that. Now, uh, um, he said he answers. He says. No, he doesn't deny it. He doesn't say it's not the law. He says, Because tanzih from directions is something that the or the, the mind or the reason of the amma or the laity 
cannot reach it's, it's difficult for them to reach حتى تكاد تجزم بنفي ما ليس في الجهة to the extent that awam they would almost like uh, um, um, uh, be certain of denying the existence or negating the existence of whatever is not in the direction كان الأنسب what was more suitable for revelation في خطاباتهم in uh, في uh, uh, خطاباتهم or I think this is a mistake it should be um, uh, um, no okay كان الأنسب في خطواتهم والأقرب إلى إصلاحهم Sorry guys, I got a call. So, okay, so what was uh, uh, what is more suitable given the fact that they know for certainty, practically know for certainty that whatever is in the direction d- does not exist and uh, um, um, that ten- kind of tenzi is far from them, it's more, it was more suitable to address them with a zahir that is tashbih and with an affirmation that the creator is in the most noble of directions, which is the direction of above. Uh, with uh, subtle indications here and there uh, towards tanzi uh, mutlaq uh, uh, that that Allah is munazzah and there's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here's an affirmation from Tafsir and there's obviously many like it, especially with uh, Imam Ghazali, Rahmanullah, Razi, and you see this across the board that the Amma they uh, um, <laughs> that they they really don't understand uh, the law of the Quran in. That uh, in the way that Shara affirm it, and uh, back to what was said here, that man zama an Rahman. This is back from Khalq uh, of Al Bukhari. Uh, whoever claims that uh, uh, the Allah rose above His throne in a way that is different or that, uh, that is opposed to what is affirmed by the laity within their hearts is a jahmi. And again, um, emphasis on that point of, uh, you know, jahmi, uh, um, the, 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 the specific type of jahmiya that takes you out of the fold of Islam and somebody that has aspect. I think he received a call, so just uh, give him a minute. But you back? Obviously? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, because uh, we need to get up soon. So I don't know if you guys have any comments on that point, but I'm, I'm also going to need to get up soon. I can, I can still be. I, I'll still talk. Like, just connect my AirPods, and then um, it's going to be like a the project of like putting the kids to sleep and stuff. But maybe for like another twenty minutes, I'll still be around. Um, I'll just be less active, maybe. Okay, do you want to open it up for people to come up? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right, so let me just uh, open this up for hand raising. So if you guys have any questions about what was said, uh, you can raise your hand and come up and ask a question. But like we said last time, this is a room about the Aqidah of Imam Bukhari and responding to the previous room, right? We're not interested in... Uh, talking about uh, anything else other than what was discussed in the room, inshallah. So if you have a question, uh, please come up and, and raise your hand. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Just give me a second, hold on. Yeah, so um, mostly I'm not here up to defend Ashari because I'm not really fully convinced of um, any one position. Um, but I mean, I, I kind of don't want to emphasize the point when the Sheikh answered the question that I asked when I said when I asked him about you know Akafia whether we can consider it impossible or whether we can say that. It exists, but we don't know it. He answered my question by saying uh, the kafiyah 
bizatihi is impossible. And the key word there was bizatihi. Obviously, the attributes and the actions would have a kefia, which obviously from the actual position would be inconceivable and unknown. So if there's any clarification on that point, um, do put that forward because I did not see that part being mentioned. And I don't think that there's a contradiction there, but I could be wrong. So I'll let you guys clarify that one. Are you saying that you think that Harun believes that there's no kefia with the that, but there is a kefia with the specific sifat like kalam, qudra, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, that's, I mean, hearing the clip again right now, that's what it seems like. Like, whether no, there's not a, at all, yeah. that's not at all what he says, because the initial, the initial clip, which he was responding to, was him explicitly uh, responding to the issue of Kalam Allah. Right. And he said that he affirmed a kafia. Okay. He said, we don't know the kafia, we don't know the haqiqa, we don't know the reality. Right. Of it. In the second clip? Yeah, second clip, he's denying. But, but no, I, 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 uh, Jake, sorry, just he's... real quick because I can't talk. But, but yeah. uh, Jake, I think I, I know what Brother Nizam is referring to. But uh, I'm, I'm going to leave you with him. But then I just want to say something real quick, right? Uh, after you guys are done, maybe consider this point, right? So let's assume he did say that, right? So let's assume he did say that. Oh, the, the, um, the, how does that make any sense? Because his, his, point, his point is that... Mm, just one second, let me just yeah. say this. His point is that whatever has a kaifiyah requires takhsis. So, I mean, do the, yeah. the so attributes would, of God require takhsis, but not his essence? Yeah, that I mean, doesn't make that any sense? sense. That doesn't yeah. even make sense. I'm interpreting them more charitably because he made a general claim that anything that has takhsis requires a fashioner so that would mean that god's attributes would have to be created well i think that's a stretch but anyway i'm not here to defend our shitty position what's the stretch um, what's the stretch about it what's the stretch he said anything with a kefia requires a fashioner a creator of it if the attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have a kefia then they require a creator where's the stretch you're saying that you're saying attributes okay anyway like again i'm not i'm not here to defend a shari position uh that's not what i'm here to do um i was just clarifying that point but fair enough like you know we can see things how you want i'm actually up no here no, no i'm not seeing it how i want it's not seeing how i want you should respond to the point and say yeah jake that's right because mm -hmm. you don't have an answer to it well i mean the way i see it is again the Ashadis, when they, when they, the claim that the, I mean, at least to my understanding, the way that they understand the attributes is that they say that the attributes are neither the same as his essence, nor are they other than his essence, right? What does that mean? That, kind of, that means that we cannot equate the attributes to the essence like the divine simplists, but we don't even, we don't say that the attributes are other than his essence. Um, what does that part mean? Well, you'll have to read Ashari text again. I'm not. I'm not a fully knowledgeable in the Ashari position. I'm I know what it means. About... I know what it means. It means okay. when we say that the attributes, because we have the same exact position, it's not an Ashari position. When we say that the attributes are not the essence, what it means is they're not identical to it, the essence. It's a refutation or disagreement of the uh, position of divine simplicity which says that the attributes are identical to the essence right. when we say that the attributes are not other than the essence what that means is they are not separate and distinct from him meaning they are attributes which subsist in his essence they're not like floating properties that are distinct and separate from him That's no, what so means. again like i don't i don't I don't know if Ashris interpret the attributes to be subsisting within his essence. Um, they do. I don't know if that's. But anyway, I'm not here. Okay, well, whatever. Well, what do you like, think I'm they are? If they're Ashris. not identical, what do you think they are? Brother, that's not debatable. I mean, that's okay, explicitly look, look, their look, position. Look, look. I don't, nobody look, would look. deny that yet. I was here for, for that. We can ignore that, honestly. Let's move on to the other, uh, like. I'm trying to, I'm here to, again, but here, okay, here okay, before, before you move on, let me just say this, mm -hmm. right? So there's one, of, there's a couple of options, right? Either he means the, that, um, the, whatever has a okay, fee, uh, um, it requires success. Uh, sorry, back to that point, right? It requires success, which would apply taxis, to everything. Essence, and, and meaning. one second. This meaning specification, which means it would require an external cause. It would have to be caused. And that would apply to both essence and attributes. Or he's saying that, no, that just applies to essence 
uh, sorry, that just applies to the uh, um, um, essence and the attributes could have a kaifiyah that we don't know and that wouldn't require a muhassas. Then we'd say two things there. First of all, that's all we say about the safat anyway. So we say that there's a kaifiyah that we don't know and you'd be saying the same thing. So where's the relevant difference? And the second thing would be, where's the relevant difference between you saying that the sifat having a kaifiyah doesn't require a muhassas and the essence having a kaifiyah requires a muhassas? That would be just to, just to sum it up. Okay, fair enough. Um, I understand what you're saying. Um, the second question I came to up here to ask was the question related to what you guys are talking about uh, earlier uh, when it came to uh, the archery position. Um, that essentially, um, I was I was confused a little bit because like someone was trying to summarize in the chat. Um, like what? What was the what was the exact criticism that essentially, like you know, Ashris will say that the agent is Allah and and the the action. I don't remember exactly what was said. The Ashari say that the actions of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are makhluk. They're created. Why are they created? Because for them, the act equals the effect. The act of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is identical to the effect. Imam Bukhari says no. You have three things. You have the agent, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have his action, and you have the effect of his action. And these three are not identical. They're not the same. And he says that the effect of the action is created, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's action himself is not created, which shows that he does not have the same position as the Ash'aris. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, that that's that clears things up. Um, but yeah, no, I, I last thing, last comment. I wanted to appreciate the room, the efforts being made. Um, see these these back and forth in these conversations. I think they really help um, because again, for me, this is a journey. I'm still navigating these things, but um, rooms like these help. So I appreciate the efforts. Um, Jazakallah khair. Well, yeah, yeah, and the, the the second point is on this on the same related to that is that not only does he say that the act is not the effect, that they're two distinct things. You have the act which produces the effect. He says that the act is uncreated and he also explains that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hawadith very clearly, which we didn't get into enough detail to show. Maybe we might have to do a part two, Abdu, where we bring the statements of uh, their own scholars who commented on Imam Bukhari, like uh, Al-Kashmiri, uh, and others who explicitly go over these texts from Imam Bukhari and comment on them saying that yes, he's affirming uh, and even that he affirmed the same position as Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay, so this is not just our interpretation of uh, Imam Bukhari's texts. I think he left. No, he's still here. I just want to make uh, two points, right? So not only just does Imam Bukhari agree with us, he says that the speech where you say the action and uh, you know the effect being the same, this is the speech of the Jahmiyyah. And when he's mentioning his position, he doesn't just say this is my position. He says uh, the understanding of Ahlul Ilm, the people of knowledge, meaning the Ahlul Sunnah, right? And then the, he mentions what he believes, right? Uh, what they believe and then he agrees with them. Yeah, he says this is in opposition to the Muslims, right? right? He says this is in opposition to what the Muslims believe, and he's attributing this position to the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila of what the Ash'aris are saying, which they say that the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are makhluk, are created. That's what they say. And he says this is in opposition to what the Muslims say. So what right. does that mean? You guys are taking the position of the... Uh, Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila and Harun Khan read this out and I'm just baffled how he read it and thought it was agreeing with him right okay I just um, just a very quick point so sorry uh, just really quickly this in fact the idea of um, the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being temporal I don't like using the word hadith because a lot of people just equate that with creation but being successive and temporal uh, is it's not just um, it shouldn't just be our reading of the text. No, in fact, 
there's no disagreement that uh, on 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 whether Ibn um, Al Bukhari uh, uh, calls the um, speech of Allah and the kun that is like the cause of creation through which He creates a fad. He calls them acts. Now it's not just our understanding, as per the Ashari understanding of actions, and that actions are necessarily uh, temporal. Based on their understanding, that. Uh, fail or those actions are necessarily temporal. So um, uh, 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 we're not dealing with the Maturidi position here, we're dealing with the Ash'ari position. So even their understanding of Af'al requires them to uh, see that as the lazim of Imam Bukhari's position. And again, listen, why this is so important, and Abdu, I think we need to actually, maybe if it's just a short room, go over some of the statements of their own scholars commenting on this. Why? I'm not, of course, I'm not saying that this is just our interpretation of Imam Bukhari. I think it's as clear as, you know, anything. It's, it's very clear. However, I don't want them to just think, oh, well, Jake is saying it's clear and Fuad and Abdurrahman are saying it's clear, right? We can actually go and show that some of the earliest commentators on Imam Bukhari's text explicitly affirm the same thing that we're saying. So there, and this is long before Ibn Taymiyyah. So it's not like, oh, the Wahhabis and the Taymis. No, no, we show you that Ash'ari and Maturidi scholars before Ibn Taymiyyah are saying the same thing that we said. They're reading the text the same way and they're saying, yes, Jake, this is exactly what Imam Bukhari is saying. That's the point because they want to accuse us of misrepresenting what Imam Bukhari said no, it's not to show or prove that this is the correct position. It's to show that even other people, your own scholars who are reading the same text, are interpreting it in the same manner. There's not this Wahhabi conspiracy theory to try to make Imam Bukhari fit in with what we're saying. Yeah, um, but with Harun Kaj, um, there was a question about KPR, right? So <clears throat> you have to understand that Shia Rab. If you read their books, for example, uh, Abd al-Rahman bat Taftazani, Taftazani says certain attributes are um, not actually real attributes. They're attributes that are external to him. For example, Rahmah, okay, or the effect of Kalam, uh, meaning the Quran. So when it comes to that, because uh, Harun Kanj says that anything there's tafsif on needs, he needs a fashioner, then in that case, when he's saying there's a howness, he's talking about the attributes that are external to God which we attribute to them anyways, like the rahma, like the ghadab, like the kalam, you know, meaning the kalam that's temporal and created according to them. But as for the actual attributes and his that, or, you know, the attributes that subsist in him and the that of Allah, they believe there is no hawness. And that's Harun Khan's position. So I hope that clarifies it up for Nidham. Yeah, I don't know why uh, Nidham is... Uh, confused, I mean, I don't want to say it, but I have a screenshot of him saying exactly this. You know, I mean, I can post it, but I don't want to like make this about him uh, of uh, Nizam himself explicitly saying anyone who is affirming a kafia is, is basically a deviant. OK, and he's in the chat now and is saying that what we're saying about the Ash'aris is not actually their position. Well, come up and tell us what we're saying is incorrect. We'd be happy to hear what you're saying. Show us what is the statements that we are saying are inaccurate or misrepresentations of their position, and then um, tell us what actually is the correct position that the Ashadis hold. Because I don't think we're at anywhere misrepresenting that whatsoever. But if not, if he's not going to come up and um, come back up, or nobody else will, then um, I think we'll just leave it there. If anybody else has a quick uh, comment or question before we close down the room, uh, or Nizam, you want to come back up, uh, feel free to do so. Yeah, I, I just have one question uh, because I, I like the point that Abdul Rahman made that, you know, saying somebody has the jahum in him is not takfir, right? But did you guys clarify that, you know, the Khalq al Quran is something that Ahmed and others, they believe it to be kufr, right? Uh, including. The position of the Lavziya. I don't know if you guys clarified that. Um, go ahead. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's that's quite explicit, like all over the place with the text. So what I said early on was that um, 
uh, uh, Brother Harun, he read most of those texts anyway. So uh, they're quite explicit. That whoever says that the Quran is created uh, is a kafir, yes. Uh, but then, uh, of course, um, you have that, uh, um, um, you know, uh, maxim that لازم المذهب ليس المذهب and what they verbally affirm versus what is uh, just follows from what they say and all that stuff. And uh, I think that specific discussion is just beyond my pay grade, so um, I, I won't go there. Yeah, anyway, I mean, and people like Nizam, just to be clear, and most of the other people in the audience, and he's not even claiming to be Ash'ari, but some that even do, the reality is they don't even really know the position of the, you know, Ash'aris and what the Mutakalimun say. So, um, yeah, we're not doing mass takfir. I'm not saying that Fuad was trying to advocate that at all. But just to be clear, uh, most of them don't even know you know, they they want to use the label, oh, I'm an Ash'ari, and then you start asking them one or two questions, and they don't really know the key distinctive features of the school and what their beliefs are and so on and so forth, right? So that's why we're here to clarify these matters. But when we make the rooms, it seems like they don't want to come up. So I don't know what to tell them. Um, Someone's raised their hand, so uh, I've, I've accepted. Let's see uh, if they come up. Uh, but and, and, and before they do, uh, I just wanted to um, highlight to the uh, people listening that the pinned link that you can see, uh, please try to access it. Uh, it's a short write-up on uh, the whole issue of uh, the utterance of the Qur'an, the words of the Qur'an, and uh, why Imam Bukhari uh, wrote this book, Khalq uh, Af'al al-Ibad. What was the, uh, you know, the, the reason he went into writing this book? And in doing so, this article will go into the details of what was said before Imam Bukhari, what was said by Imam Ahmed, his students, people around him, and what clarifications did Imam Bukhari make. Once you read this, the whole conversation we've had so far will start, uh, the, the, the puzzles will start fitting because you'll come to know why this book is kind of where the, uh, you know, you, you, you level the scales, you know whose side you're on by seeing the debate and what the nuance is. So yeah, please do uh, read this article, and in the next um, uh, session, inshallah, when uh, Jake and Abdurrahman host it, uh, you, you'll be better in a position to maybe ask questions uh, that would be more closer to the topic of uh, our topic at hand. Yeah, uh, assalamu alaikum, Virgil. Did you have a comment or question? I can't really hear you. I can't really hear you very well, Virgil. Wow. Okay. Right. I just yeah, that's it. All right. I, 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 I'm gonna read the article, inshallah, and next time y'all come back with the rule, I can, you know, ask the questions. You know? Can y'all hear? Can y'all hear that? Hold on. Yeah, uh, if you want to come back or if you want to just type your question in the chat, I don't know, because it's really hard to hear you, brother. All right, okay. All right, I'm just going to, I just muted your mic just because it was really loud. It was starting to get um, a bit disturbed. Um, Anyway, so I think we'll leave it there, guys. I don't think Nizam or, uh, wants to come back up, which is fine. No problem. Uh, and I don't think any of the uh, other people in the audience raised their hand. So I think we'll just leave it there. Um, like I said, it, uh, we may need to do a part two just to address some of the other um, statements that we were planning to bring. Uh, not many. Uh, and then we can, you know, possibly have a discussion around that, inshallah. But we thank you all for uh, joining us today, and uh, we'll see you again next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.